tell me how the strength of cancel culture, what that did to you personally. Oh, it's horrific. I yeah, said yeah. all this dumb stuff, and then the press had taken a video, pieced it together, put it out, and that was it. It was over. Overnight, yeah, bang. Yeah, I, I woke up and it was going viral. I was trending for days on Twitter. Then the announcement come out, he's cancelled, he's not coming back on. The comedy industry hated me. Bookings dropped, obviously no more PAs. I said, I'm sorry, Dapper Laughs is wrong. I don't want to do it no more, I quit. So, and I was just like, please stop, leave me alone. And then my dad died. Just couldn't handle it. Okay. I'd already worked out how much money I had, how long that would last me. I just wanted to drink and use drugs and then die. When did Big Brother come about in 2018? How did that come about? And they said, look, it's you and a woman. We need a villain that the press are going to go mad for. I said, 100 grand and I'll do it. They came back with 80 and I said, let's go. Where does Dapper Laughs come from? It's Dapper because I'm good looking and laughs because I'm funny. <laughs> End of. <laughs> and this has been a right laugh, man. <laughs> it reminds me that I'm a funny You are. Oh, can I say that? <laughs>
and I knew I was a goner. So when he was out, I got, went and sat in his chair, the headmaster's <laughs> chair. He had a cup of like a tea, and a, I filled up the kettle, and I made made put the kettle on, made a cup of tea, got a biscuit out, and I took my shoes and socks off, and I put my feet up, just my feet, and I was like that when my mum walked in through the door. <laughs> I had a cup of tea and I was dipping a biscuit and he went fucking mental and started smashing his own office up and my mum had to like calm him down and he was he was mental he was mental but on the way out my mum was like that was good <laughs> do you know what I mean so I was fucked anyway I was always fucked because my mum never give a shit yeah, yeah, she yeah. was like alright that was good but we've got to find you a new school and where was <laughs> where was what was what was your old man like when you knew he got expelled my old man was my, I didn't see my dad <laughs> It is funny when you look back, I think, what was wrong with me? But then, yeah, I turned it into, see kids, whatever's up with you, whatever your problem is, just turn it in. If you can make money out of yeah, it, you're all right. Yeah, turn it fun, yeah. Yeah, unless it's something bad, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but my my mum my and dad split up when I was younger. You're picturing it, aren't you? I can't, yeah. I can't get out of my head. I, I, see, I, I, I saw my headmaster, this is no word of a lie. There's no word of a lie. I was walking around Tesco's a couple of years ago and I saw my old headmaster. He looked at me, I went, hello, so he went, fuck off. <laughs> I thought, myself, I thought you'd been waiting years to say that, didn't you? He must have seen me on, he must have seen me on TV and everything. Yeah. Big brother gone, you fucking wanker. <laughs> oh, oh, I feel for teachers, man. Mate, he must have been building up for 20 yeah, years yeah, in so his it, mind game. If I see like, him. Fuck off, I, thought, I better leave him. <laughs> Oh, man. Mate, where were we? <laughs> mate, yeah. Your old man. Tell yeah. me about your old man. What was he like? Was he a, father, was he a role model? Fatherly figure? Yeah, it was, it's, it's, my old man was like a, a comedian as well in the true sense of the way. He's still laughing, isn't he? He's gone. Mate, He's gone. mate. Yeah. Go on, go um, on. <laughs> <laughs> Look, guys. Um, you need a wet floor sign over mate. here, man. No, um, yeah, my old man was funny as well. He was... <laughs> Mate. You can't stop. Mate. It's fun of them ones. Oh, mate, that is quality. Yeah. I can just picture you. Yeah. The kid, the sort of, it's the sort of thing I would do as a kid, yeah, yeah. though. I didn't give a fuck. When I got suspended, yeah. I was the same doing it. Do like, you know what? The weird thing is, I always knew, I kind of sat there, I knew back then that I weren't going to get any decent jobs. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I thought I was thick. So I was like, it's weird. I, I, I was fast forward. I was at school going, this is shit, right? Because you gonna work, knew. This ain't going to work out for me, so yeah. I might as well fuck about. Because I'm gonna, have, I might as well have some good stories to tell. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I'll tell you what else I relate it to going to school, uh, f uh, fighting when I was growing up as well with kids. I was never a very good fighter, right? And my old man actually, because my old man used to teach karate and everything. Yeah, he, he had a dojo a lot, right? Yeah. And he used to teach karate. And I say, you're gonna teach me karate? I've done one lesson with him, and he's like, no, nah, man, it ain't for you. Because like, I just, I was like, how do you knock someone out? Do you know what I mean? I didn't want to learn all the. He was like, I can't do it with you. <laughs> And um, he always said to me, look, listen, you ain't much of a fighter, but it's all about the stories in life. That's what he used to say to me. It's so he's saying. Okay. He's saying it's about the stories. So if you're in a, ever in a situation where you're going to get beaten up and someone's starting on you, just before they fucking hit you or it's going to kick off, make sure you rip the absolute granny out of them yeah. because you're you're good at that, yeah. right? And then whenever that, if, if you say something really fucking funny, if you really nail him, whenever that geezer's telling the story about when he beat you up, his mates would be like, yeah, do you remember what you he said? That? <laughs> yeah. And I fucking, I've, I've had that. I had that, I had that a couple of years ago. I started boxing. I don't know if you've seen on my socials. Mm. I can have a scrap now, so I don't mind too much. Yeah, but yeah. I, when I started boxing, I was putting loads of videos, I was speeding it up a little bit on the punch bag and that's so I look fucking, <laughs> fucking hard. Ninja. Yeah, yeah. Get people to come to the gym going let me just film me knocking you out come on mate and all this stuff but so i looked hard online uh but geezers were putting it on me when i was going out right okay. this is when i was still drinking yeah yeah so that mentality has always been the same with me yeah. if if my mates and there's other lads there and it's going to kick off i've always been like yeah but i'll just get a saint good in first yeah. before i get sparked yeah and uh this one lad come up to me and he was like it's a Good gag. And he, he's like, oh, I'm actually putting it in my tour. He come up to me and he was like, you're doing a bit of fucking boxing, aren't you? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's just trying to make conversation with me. And he's like, yeah, I'm looking for, for a, a gym for my son, actually, do a bit of boxing. You couldn't recommend a gym, could you? I went, yeah, Jimmy Savile, you <laughs> And he knocked me out. <laughs> I don't know if you can say <laughs> so, but he knocked me class Did fuck he? out. Yeah. How old were you? What? Like, this was only a few years a few, ago. Was when it? I was still drinking. Were yeah. you still boozing and partying? Yeah. I've been get, I've got I've been knocked out on stage. I'm doing stand up. Knocked clean out. Where? That, Where? That, uh, that was in Cyprus. I was doing the open mic nights. Uh, and no, no, not the open mic nights. The um, all inclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hotels. So 
I was doing an all inclusive and again, my old man, he used to, got me in a lot of trouble <laughs> over the years. Terrible parenting. But no, he used to say to me as well when I started doing stand up because he loved comedy and he, he kind of come on my whole journey with me since I was since I've come out of school. I was yeah. like, I want to be an actor or a comedian. Um, but he always used to say, look, if you're no, actually, it was it was an older comedian that first said this to me and I started doing it. And my dad was like, yeah, that's your thing heckling right dealing oh, yeah, with heckling yeah, yeah yeah and he was like you've really got to deal with hecklers that can be your thing like go brutal on them and uh this old comedian had said to me if if someone heckles you go for their um go for their yeah. wives if they're with their wives oh, right God. and the wives normally say to the other because the husband like shut up whatever and yeah. the wife be like shut up stop it because he's you know because i'll go on to the wife and the wife will shut him up and uh i can remember telling my dad that and my dad was like right well you've got to write some fucking gags about the wives this old comedian in Cyprus had told me, because he'd seen me getting heckled and sort of dying on my ass, not being able to deal yeah. with it. So me and my dad sat and wrote some jokes and we wrote one and, and it got, one of them got me knocked out. This geezer was, as soon as I come on, because they don't like the, the Northerners. Don't like the Southern London. Well, yeah. it's not that they don't like the Southern comedians. It's like they think they're cocky. And especially yeah. when it's all like, all inclusive, they're fucked. Yeah. So you've got to be brutal, uh, especially with, with the Northern audiences like the Scousers or whatever, or the Manx, you've got to be brutal. And then they're like, yeah, we're we'll let him because yeah. he's brutal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you, if they sense blood... They'll be at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah they'll yeah, be yeah, at yeah. you. Down south, if I'm doing gigs down here in London and stuff like that, they're with you, do yeah. you know what I mean? A bit more. But yeah, this guy shouted out your shit, get off. And I just said to him, is that your wife? And he was at the front. I was like, is that your wife you're with? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, is it your first wife? He said, no, this is my second wife. I said, she wouldn't have been my first choice either, the fat <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that yeah, to him? Yeah, and he got past the oh, security mate. and chinned me. Yeah. He chinned you on stage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many people in the crowd, roughly? Uh, it wasn't a big was show. It a hotel jo- yeah, a hotel? Was it a hotel job? Yeah, it was a hotel job. It wasn't a big show. How, what happened after that? Were you like, I'm stopping, throw the mic down, just Well, carry I was locked on. out, mate. So Were you completely the knocked? Yeah, he sparked me clean out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a video of it. There's a video somewhere of... of mate. Before. Yeah, it's... I love... I, I Personally, myself, I love... Like, Were you using at that time? Coke. Yeah. 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 And booze when he come and knock you out. Uh, I wouldn't have been off. I wouldn't have been there's I couldn't sniff coke and do stand up, but I'd be drunk. Yeah, I'd, okay. I'd, I'd use alcohol um, to settle my nerves. Yeah. Uh, for stand up yeah. back in the day. Just going back there. So you got expelled from that school. Yeah. Your next school. What was that like for you? That was really difficult, actually, because the. Where the, was it? <clears throat> so I got expelled from Salesians, which was in Chertsey. Yeah. And then uh, I joined Fulbrook, which was in Newhall, which was, was uh, it's not far, it's, yeah. it's in Surrey. Yeah. But one of my pals, big this big lump of a geezer called Luke Redfern, he'd been expelled as well, like before me, a few months before, and he'd gone to that school. It's like a school for rejects, sorry if anyone went there. Yeah. But you know, you've got like the nice schools and then yeah. it was like one of them ones. And um, when I went there, they didn't really want me because like my record my school record had come through your and school, the headmaster your school CV yeah the headmaster must have rang him and gone fuck get rid of the kettle <laughs> <laughs> but no um, he uh, uh, they, they they said I could join right and this is no way of a lie it's 100% true they said I could join the school but for the first week I had to wear my old school uniform so I had to wear my I think it was like a purple or a bluey type yeah. uniform from Salesians and their uniform was brown I had to wear that for a week and keep myself self out of trouble for a week no fighting no arguing or anything like that. And if I could survive a week there as like this odd one out there, then I could stay. And then I had a big list of things that if I'd done, I'd have to leave. So when I joined that school, it was a bit different. It was yeah. like, my mum was like, if you- More disciplined. Yeah, yeah. like okay. you, you can't, you can't. And how did you respond to that discipline? Um, did it make you more disciplined? You know, in the it made me craftier, your... craftier. Okay. Just, you know, any, that there was, it was more, a bit rougher in that school yeah. um, and, because for some fucking stupid reason, my mate, my big mate that had gone and told everyone that I can have a scrap. He's like, he's only small, but he's a nutter and all yeah. that, which I wasn't. Yeah. So he'd beat me up. So a few people wanted to have it with me when I first joined there. And it was different areas as well. So with different groups of lads outside of school. So there, I got in trouble. I had a um, few bits of trouble that week, but outside of school, not in the school. And then I managed to keep my head down really. I did get in trouble there, but I managed to get my GCSE, so mm. I calmed it down a little mm. bit. Yeah. And what was your movement after that? You got your GCSE, didn't fancy going sixth form or anything like that? No, I, well, I, was, I fell in love with drama. When I when I moved to Fulbrook, they had a brilliant drama department and a great drama teacher. And what was his that, name? Uh, Mr. Boone, I think okay. his name was. And um, they, um, they, uh, they understood a little bit more about neurodivergence in there. They understood that, you know, I'm not just naughty. 
Like, do you know what I mean? I felt like I was pushed more into, they were like, right, we're pushing more into drama. You yeah. should focus. If you like this, yeah. you should focus. Not just stay away from everyone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. Well, fair play to them. Yeah, yeah. For it was, spotting that. Because you've got a talent. Yeah. They're just, they're just homing in on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I started learning uh, performance and then they said, you know, and that's really, to be honest with you, that's what saved me uh, knuckling down to get GCSEs. I mean, I scraped through with the GCSEs. Yeah. I had to get, I don't know if it was four A to Cs or, or, or four uh, a, B, C, D, E, I don't even know. Yeah. But I had to get a certain amount to get into college to do drama. Okay. So then I had a reason to knuckle okay. down because I was like, well, maybe I'm going to be an actor. Maybe maybe this is what I'm going to do. So if I work hard, I, I had a reason. To, yeah. You know. Did you know you were different? Did you know you were a piss taker? Did you know that you were something not right in your in your mind? Did you know the same? Yeah. Or were you like, do you know what? There's more to sitting there listening to someone talk to me about physics and chemistry and algebra. Uh, I don't know. I just felt free. Really, okay. I felt I felt a little bit more. I always felt like uh, I guess it was it's going to be all right in the end, whatever it is. Yeah. So I'm just going to have fun with it. Mm. I didn't care about getting told off, mm. and I didn't think I, I I don't know really. I don't I, I don't think I felt different at the time. I just felt like I was having fun, mm. you know. So where did the comedy go then? Were you going for drama? Did you want to be an actor? Or did yeah. You, go, you know what? I actually want to go in the comedy. Or did you fall into the comedy? I, well, what happened was I I went. The, the the acting turned into musical theatre for me so I started doing musical theatre like plays and stuff and being on stage in front of an audience I was like this is me That's and when you, and what was that feeling like when you're on stage oh it was amazing it was like suddenly it was suddenly it was like I was good yeah, okay like, not not like um not good as in like you felt you felt at home yeah I felt I felt like I was a good boy yeah you know okay. what I mean not like a naughty boy I was a, I was being a good boy and being praised for something you know that's really good that's hard work that's great oh, which like felt it. good but also I, f I felt like I was the best at it yeah. do you know what I mean I was suddenly like I was in there I was doing auditions I, I got in a little film um, funny enough called The Bottle that I auditioned everyone in the in the um, BTEC diploma course there's like a few hundred kids they auditioned everyone and they, they, there was like two or three parts and I got a part in that mm. and it sort of solidified that I was better than mm. well what I thought I was better I was good at something you know mm. what I mean I was better than other people at something and then that was it I was like it's performing that's 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 me that's what yeah. I'm going to do and um uh, I'd done it, done the acting, done everything. But my mum had moved away when I was about um, 15 or 16. Just when I was going through the transition yeah. of school to college, my yeah. mum up and left. She bought the council house a few years before because you could buy them cheaper. Yeah. And she, she'd sold it. She'd done something to it and sold it, made some money. And she wanted to go and buy a hotel in a, a little five-bed hotel up in Cornwall, which she mm. ended up losing in the end uh, with her fella. But my, her and my stepdad moved up, moved away. And I moved out when I was like 15, 16. So I was working on the side. Um, and very quickly, I realized that, you know, I've got a graft, I've got yeah. to work because I was renting um, a, a place off my uncle. Um, and then as soon as college finished, it was like real life for me. Yeah. It was graft. What, was age, all... what, what rough year was this? What do you mean? What year was when you finished college? Late 90s, early 2000s? 2000s. 2000s. Yeah, two, okay. yeah early 2000s. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I was auditioning, but getting nowhere. I became an estate agent. I done like car sales, some other sales stuff and that. I, I got addicted to money. I started yeah. liking money. Yeah. Um, I got a company car and I became an estate agent and I was auditioning less and less. Um, and then I discovered, I can remember I was at a house party and everyone was getting off their nut. And I, um, I saw a DVD case on the, on the floor of Lee Evans. And I looked, I was looking at it and I was like, can I put this on? And everyone was like, you know, it's a bit weird in here, but I was like fucking hyper focused on it, and I put it on, and I sat and watched it. Mm. And it and Lee Evans, I've seen comedians before, but Lee Evans is like an actor. Yeah, he's like an actor comedian. He's another level. Isn't he's he? another level. <clears> yeah, <throat> yeah. and he, I, I fell in love with the way that he portrayed his comedy. Like stand up comedians normally sit and tell. You know, there's a way to set up jokes. Yeah. You know, wordplay and deliver comedy. But Lee Evans would act it out. He'd become the characters. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If he's talking about his wife, you know, mm. there's one where he talks about his wife coming out of a shower where she's got, she's got, you know, where women yeah. wrap the towel around and she's, it's like this mysterious woman that's come from Africa or something and like coming out and he's acting <laughs> yeah. it out. And yeah, I was yeah. like, and suddenly you're visualizing it all. Yeah. And then the punchline comes, you laugh your ass off yeah. and then he's on to the next one. And I looked at it, I was like, that's funny. He's performing, he's acting, it's comedy. Uh, and then that was it. I yeah. was like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. I, that's what I want to do. And um, I started doing comedy clubs and stuff, but I was losing myself with the career. Like I was like getting into the money and that. And when I was about 18, I was like, nah, stop. 
I'm going to end up just being a, an estate agent. Yeah. Uh, not there's nothing wrong if you are one out mm. there, but um, uh, I've got to perform. I want to be on stage in front of people. So I've got a job. I'll try and keep this short, but I've got a job and went over to Cyprus to do hotel entertainment when I was about 21 or, t or maybe about 20. Or I think it was my 20th birthday. Just so 1920, around that sort of age, I went to Cyprus, Iron Apple, oh, and uh, and I was doing hotel entertainment, <clears throat> yeah. bingo, who wants to be a millionaire, all of that jazz, and I started putting my jokes in, writing jokes, and then I had my own comedy night, I, by like a few months Quality. in, I was doing my own comedy, going around the swimming pool, going, do you want to come and watch my comedy show yeah. tonight, doing my comedy show, and I got spotted there by someone that ran cruise ship entertainment, Yeah. And uh, went back home and auditioned. He, he said, I want you to come and audition to be our host on the cruise ship. And I, and then by the end of that year, I was working on cruise ships. And I'd, I'd done two world cruises, traveling the, around the world, doing stand-up comedy. And I stayed doing that for about four or five years, traveling the world, doing stand-up. And then I come home and discovered social media. Mate, amazing. Mad, isn't it? Yeah, that's mad. All from being a twat at school. <laughs> yeah, but perfect. You know, but you've, you honed it in. You've honed yeah. in what you're good at. Making people laugh, having yeah. a laugh not taking life too seriously. Mm. What was it like for you? I want to know, like, you're going out of Cyprus. How did you know you were a comedian or not? Like, uh, were you testing the water while you were doing different stuff, making people laugh? Were you testing a few gags to see if you can actually... That's how you do it. That's how you do it. I mean, the, the difference between someone becoming a successful stand-up comedian or a comedian, like, whether it's online, making videos or whatever, but truly in the truly in the art form of stand-up comedy, the, only, the main difference is who between someone that's successful that makes it or that makes a living out of mm. it and someone that doesn't is who can die on their ass for the longest die die on, on your ass okay. how long you can sustain dying on your ass go on give me, give me an example give me an example just telling jokes going up on stage having an idea yeah. writing writing a set yeah going up on stage and none of it working None, them not laughing and it getting awkwarder and awkwarder and awkwarder. Uh, but you know, when you go, you've got to do five minutes. That's how you get paid right, or okay. 10 minutes. So oh, so you, you just go on and do five minutes set? You, you, can, you can do, but or for me, what I was doing yeah. was I was doing it before the game show. So yeah, okay. I'd go like, here's who wants to be a millionaire, but first, and then doing okay. it. But, what you, but the, the main difference with me, I believe, and a lot of comedians out there is, because what you do is you do five or 10 minutes, and it's the same with the comedy clubs, yeah. when you go to comedy clubs. But one of the jokes might work, and you go right. I got that. Yeah, I'll save that. Put that in the bank. Yeah, yeah, bang. And then you go again, and then next thing you got, next thing you go up, and all five minutes of it worked. And then you nail that five minutes for a bit, and you take the whole five, and then you put that in the bank, and you keep doing that till you got an hour, and then you just keep doing that and doing that. But the difference with me was whether they laughed or not. I loved being on stage. <laughs> I didn't give a fuck. Really? Yeah, I was like... So if you were dying on your arse, you I didn't care. I didn't care. I mean, it was embarrassing. Yeah. But I'll, I'll be like, what the fuck's wrong with you lot? Yeah, Do you okay. know what I mean? Turn it back but on. But not just that, I could still walk down the pub or walk around the corner and go, excuse me, I'm a comedian. Yeah. Whether I was dying or yeah. they were, whether they were laughing or yeah. not, I could go, I'm a comedian. So you really believed in yourself? Yeah, I did. I was just to, like, yeah. one day I'll be funny, but yeah. not just that, just having the label. That's how much I loved it. Like, okay. That's how much I was like... Like if I can call myself a comedian, or like I've got to get up and do the comedy, yeah. whether it's funny or not, it don't matter. One yeah. day it will be. Yeah. So in that way, so it's inevitable. It was going to happen for yeah. me because I, I found the funny and and stuff. What with a wicked it. attitude to have, yeah. Dan. Thank That's you, quality, mate. mate. Well, tell me about the cruise ships. <clears throat> How long are you on a cruise ship for? Your contracts were normally, if it was a world cruise, yeah. for like four to six months. So you're on a ship for four to six months. Obviously, you're getting off. At port and yeah. different stuff. <clears throat> That's a massive part of my life. I rarely talk about. I haven't really spoken about it. Um, people don't know a lot about that, but it was a huge part of my life. And also because, uh, to be honest with you, my mum and dad broke up when I was very young, yep. uh, and my old man was quite violent, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, toward so I, towards your mum, yeah, or towards you? Well, towards my mum. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just, he regretted it later on in life. He was a very troubled man. But um, we come from a very sort of turmoil, dysfunctional yeah. divorce, and that went on for years. My old man lost his mind, yeah. you know, and uh, he was fighting to see us and we couldn't see him. Yeah. And then my mum moved away when I was 15. So for me, like the home environment was alien to me. The stability mm. was alien to me. And um, I think a, a lot of the reason why I was craving attention and, yeah. and lashing out or, you know, like doing performing, you know, looking for love. Yeah. Like, trying to get that validation that I was loved from through, through whatever. But what I got from the cruise ships and what I got from working abroad was stability, yeah. was a home. Do you know what I mean? On the cruise ship, I didn't have to worry about nothing. I'd my, my, my food was there, my fucking, you know, I didn't pay rent, my money was mine and I was doing what I loved. So I actually loved being away from mm. my family in a way. And I loved being away from from 
I loved being self-sustained. Do you know what I mean? I was like, it was like that to me, yeah. to, to, to everyone. And I don't want to say my mum, because I love my mum. And, you know, she done the best she could. But it's kind, it was kind of like a, fuck you, I can survive on my own. Do you know mm. what I mean? So I loved working on the cruise ships. How old were you when you worked on the cruise ships? You say four to five years you worked on the yeah, cruise ships. 21, 20, around 21, 22. Yeah, I, t I went straight from Cyprus to uh, working on the cruise ship. So I went home for the audition, yeah. saw my family, and then I was gone for a good five or Give six Give me an example years. of the audition you had to do to get <coughs> on the cruise ship. I can remember it like it was yesterday. They had 50 people in there and they had one role. And 50 people. What, 50 people going for, for that one role? Yeah, and the, the, the crazy thing was I worked for a company called One Stop Entertainment in Cyprus and they held back 25% of your w weekly or monthly wage why? Uh, um, so you didn't leave early okay. uh, at the season. Yeah. So on the last day, so because if you leave, they've got to replace you in the hotel. Yeah. And the audition was like four weeks or three weeks before the end of my fucking four month contract. Mm. I mean, it, was, it wasn't massive money, but it was enough when I was younger. And I had to make that choice. You know, do I go back for the audition and lose the money that yeah. they've been retaining from me? And I spoke to my mum. My mum was always good like this. My mum was like, fuck it, go for it. Yeah. I was like, it's one one in 50. Do you yeah. know what I mean? She's like, fuck it, go for it. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If it ain't, it ain't. So <clears throat> I just believed I was going to get it, mate. I just believed I had charisma. And I also, it wasn't it wasn't about being able to, <clears throat> see, being a host, like a game show host, mm. he'd already seen me. So I had the edge. Mm. He'd stayed in the who, hotel. Who? The geezer. The, 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 you've got a cruise director yep. and then you've got an assistant. Uh, it's like an assistant director. Yep. And the cruise director runs everything in the entertainment, yep. uh, like the, everything to the security drills, like, you know, getting and the daytime uh, sports, you know, everything from ping pong and mm. your know, whole thing, but also the evening entertainment. Mm. And he'd be responsible for picking the, the shows that are coming on, you know, the okay. dancers for the okay, shows yeah. and then booking the acts and also the, uh, the host. Mm. And the host is the assistant cruise director. Um, and it, my job would be like the face of the ship. Yeah. So when you're walking on the ship, I'd be the first one. Hello, madam. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Welcome. How's Gibraltar? It's crazy out there. That's what I was like. Are you coming to the show tonight? Yeah. yeah. And I used to flirt with the old ladies yeah. and all that, you know, yeah, love yeah, them yeah. up. Yeah. But um, I looked like Barry Manilow. I had big, long, spiky fucking blonde hair. I used to straighten it and I had fucking, they love me. Do you know what I mean? And um, But I, um, but he'd already seen me perform, so I thought I had the edge because I entertained him for yeah. his holiday. I had him laughing, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I was fucking... Proper belly laughing. Bob, I had him okay, laughing, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because I was naughty. I, I, I nailed hotel entertainment. Yeah. The, cru the cruise ship stuff was so unique because you've got to be able to make, um, like, children laugh. Yeah, okay. Old people laugh yeah. and adults laugh yeah. at the same time without being too crude. Yeah. So it's like all innuendo-based, naughty, cheeky stuff that the kids don't get. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the parents get. It's like Peter Kay. Pe yeah. It's fucking good. It's yeah. a skill. There's a skill. There's a it. massive skill with yeah. that. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, you have to be like, all right, I'm just going to split the audience up into two down the middle. Madam, close your legs. For us. <laughs> yeah, it's all, all like that. Do you know what I mean? Lovely teeth. Lovely teeth, darling. Do they come out at night like the stars? All that. You know, it's like real cheeky yeah. stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, cheesy fucking stuff. But I loved it, right? But So I thought I had an edge anyway, but it's all about having a spark, a twinkle in your eye. So when you go into, you imagine me on stage, didn't you? I, I mean, I was doing the cheeky, but I was also shagging the old ladies as well. I was, I was like, do you know what I mean? There's extra money to be made here. You know what I mean? I'll be going to her and like, and they'd be like, oh, I'd be like, for a tenner. But no, uh, you know, I used to have the best gags, mate. Yeah. Okay, you know, let's not go overboard. <laughs> anyway, but um, I, uh, they gave you game shows to do at this audition. Yeah. So that you took it in turns, but they had everyone else there because you had like 50 old people in there. Yeah. And you'd have to do call the bingo or do game shows and all of that stuff. And I was making the other people that were auditioning there. I thought I'm just going to make them all look like, like yeah. you know, that they're shit and I'm yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just going to make them all laugh, you know. So when it was my turn, I got right into the other people. They didn't even they forgot they was at an audition. Yeah, you know what I mean. And they became part of the show. I was like, come on, get up here, do, 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 doing all this stuff with them. And I just believe you've got to have a twinkle in your eye. You kind of like, you know, you've got to believe you're, mm. you're supposed to be up there. Mm. You know, like always like have like a. Like a cheek, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. I like, get you. you know, like you're supposed to be. Yeah, there. this and is just, mine. And, and believe yeah. that you're funny. Yeah. But my, my skill was always audience interaction. If you come to one of my shows now, I'm doing warm up gigs for my tour. And I always, I always, if I've got to do an hour, I'll always only write like 40 minutes and I'll give myself a 20 minutes, 20 minute buffer where I've got to get into the audience yeah. and the audience. And, and that's, I think that's the heart of comedy. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Where, it's grand, so, do you yeah. remember how much money they were, you were being paid to do that yeah. on the on the ships? Two thousand, I think it's about. I probably started off at about 
14, 13, 1400 pound a month. And then when I when I was getting flown on and off as a comedian, when I was actually doing my full shows, it was probably a couple of grand a, a week uh, towards day's. the end. But when I first started and I was just like a crew, like a host, a mm. compare, probably I think peak, probably peaked at about 1500 a month. To yeah. 15, 16. But you had all your accommodation, you had all <laughs> your food. Back to you'd, you'd spend a bit yeah. in the crew bar getting pissed. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. And what was it, when, we, when did you start boozing? When did what age were you start boozing? What age did you start tucking into the gear? I started drinking. I started drinking when I was fucking fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. You know, uh, I think the first time I got pissed was at, probably at a family party, something like that. Mm. You know, drinking alcohol. My, mm. my family are heavy drinkers, um, and then just the same as everyone else at school. You know, uh, all, everyone be like, "What are you doing at the weekend? Who can get booze?" Yeah. Part, you know, so getting smashed down the local park. And then, mate, I'll start. I think I've probably done my first line of gear when I was 17. Yeah. Something like that. Maybe even younger, 16, 17. Just, it's definitely probably at college. So when you were on the cruise ships from 21 to 25, say, you I did a four, smashed. Were you, smashed. Were, you, were you addicted to gear before you jumped onto the cruise ships? Mate, do you know what the crazy thing is? I don't, I don't, I didn't think I was addicted to cocaine up until about, a year ago yeah. when I tried to stop. And this is the crazy thing that I've learned through my journey of sobriety, which tomorrow I'm a year, by the way. A year tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow I'm mate. a year, mate. Yeah. Fuck, happy nice. days, so mate. So tonight, today, I'm, can you tell? I'm feeling, yeah, mate. I'm fucking Great. Like buzzing. Do you know what mate, I mean? massive <coughs> respect. Thank you. Being clean for a year. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's not easy. No, it's hard. Mm. But, but one thing that I, because I always believed that an addict, mm. being an addict was you woke up in the morning and you reach for a bottle of vodka. Yeah. Uh, or, or a brown you, paper bag yeah, in the park. Yeah, or, boom, or you're yeah, injecting heroin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or you can't go a day without sniffing cocaine, yeah. right? Yeah. But that wasn't me. Mm. Uh, I didn't drink Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I was recovering. Yeah. I, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I didn't drink. And, you know, I got my work done. I, I, I managed through, through heavy drinking over the last 25 years, I managed to achieve quite a lot, yeah. right? Um, but whenever I did drink, I drank like a fucking maniac. Yeah. I loved it too much. It was like mayhem to me, right? Pure escapism. And I believe it goes back to my childhood, yeah. you know, things I saw, stuff that yeah. happened. You have a way of- um, Blocking it out. Blocking it out yeah. and escaping. And uh, escapism, escaping yeah. life when things get hard. So you build up this want and need for something else to mm. escape when things are hard. Mm. And drink and drugs gave that to me. but. I was like a sesha, right? So the weekends I'd yep. drink and I'd sniff and, you know, some weekends it was all right. Some weekends- So it... give me an example. You go out like most lads would go yeah. out on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah, I mean, get five, six pints and then call up the local- Yeah, dealer sometimes get, yeah. it was all right. Sometimes yeah. it was just just with my pals and we'll have a few lines when we're out and I'll get back at 12, one o'clock and that'd be it yeah. sometimes. But sometimes it wasn't. Sometimes it was I'd go out and I'd take the bag of gear on with me and I'd sniff it all the way until the morning and my m missus and kids were waking up. And then I was right. fucked the whole weekend. I was like, stay away from me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Here's we, an iPad. Just, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then my missus is going, look at the state. And I'm like, fucking can't I enjoy myself? Look at your life. Look, yeah. at, look at the house. Look at the yeah. money. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I was that guy, yeah. you know. Um, but I didn't see it as a problem, right? Because I didn't drink and use drugs Monday, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, right? But I could not pick up a drink and have one or two. Mm. Uh, alcohol, once I had one, I was getting smashed. I loved it. And I thought it was the best thing ever. Come on. Uh, and, yeah. and the weird thing is now, when I see people around me, my friends and family and like certain mates. There's some people that I just can't see anymore. But when I see some of my friends and I see them drinking now, I'm like, how come none of you are getting smashed? And they're like, because you're sober. Yeah. We don't drink, we yeah. don't normally drink well, like respect. that. respect. Yeah. No, 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 no. Is it respect? Is it no, respect? It's, no, like... it's, no, it's respect. But what I mean is they drink differently now that I don't drink with them. Yeah, okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I see them, I see them out or if I see them, I'm like, they'll be back on the track on the way home and some of them will just be having normal conversations. Yeah. It's not annihilation. It's not fucking hell. Yeah. It's because I used to drink at that level yeah. and then bring them with me. Do you know but how I mean? many lads in the country do that? Yeah. And this is, this is the know? whole point about my journey and why mm. I've shared it so much because it got to the point where uh, the come downs and the hangovers, mm. right? Something to do with, I don't know if it's my ADHD uh, or what was going on with my mental health, but I thought I was bipolar, right? Because mm. the come downs and the, the next days I'd turn like fucking 
angry, yeah. really fucking angry, and the world was against me. I used to think that like um, psychosis or uh, paranoia was, oh, there's someone in the loft, yeah. or the police are coming through the door. For me, it weren't like that. It was like my missus is cheating, or my mates don't like me, right. or fucking what's going on? Everything's fucking wrong. And the slightest little thing from her, I'd be like, oh well, fucking fuck that, and then I'd explode yeah. and go back to the pub. Yeah, and and it'd be an excuse for me. And sh bless her, she she stuck with it for a long time. We were arguing constantly for years and years and years. Every other weekend, it was like you know. And the, the massive risk that you run when you can't control your drinking, right? Mm. And, I, and this is a big thing that really upsets me when I look back on my life, is if you can't control your drinking when you drink, every time there's an occasion, a special occasion mm. to celebrate, you run the risk of ruining that memory. Mm. And that's what happened to me. Mm. The ch my children were born and I wet in the baby's head and then I've gone. And then she's there with the baby. Both times my kids were born, it breaks my heart looking back or how I behaved, my wedding day. You know, all these beautiful memories. But it's that pain that you've got to sit with to, to keep you sober. Mm. So, yeah, it's not, and, and my message is to, to the lads out there, if, 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 you're fucking, if, you're, if your relationship is failing, you know what I mean, and you feel like shit, and your mental health is down, you've got anxiety and depression, and you're drinking and using drugs. That's your answer, isn't it? Yeah. Take that out of the equation yeah. and tell me how you feel in six months. Mm. Tell me how your relationship is. Us men, we feel like we deserve to get off our nut, and we deserve to get smashed, and we deserve to fucking go on a bender because we're working so hard. That's that's all well and good. But your missus and your kids deserve you present at the weekends because mm. it's the only time they get with you. Yeah. And women don't find it attractive when you're fucked. Mm. So, you know, so tough, tough lessons. How tough long lessons. have you been with your missus for? 10 years on and off. On and off, I say on and off, like, but I've only very short periods of time where, yeah. you know. And how old are your uh, two daughters? Five and seven uh, in December. Quality, mate. So I'm so happy, mate. Yeah, mate, you look it. You I, look, I'm so happy. You know, happy. when we, we hooked up today, I was like, God, you look clean, you look yeah. well, you look I am, healthy. I'm fit, mate, and I feel good. And You look fresh. Yeah, I'm firing on all cylinders. Uh, more's happened for me in the last year, mm. uh, career wise, than has in the last 10 mm. years since I got cancelled. Mm. More like, I haven't had a tour in 10 years. I've done comedy shows, but I couldn't even fucking perform at a comedy club for a good seven years. They wouldn't have me. Yeah. Um, and now I've got a 30 date tour coming up. I, I box every day apart from Sunday and I spar twice a week and my wife is happy and proud. Brilliant. There is no drama. Don't get me wrong. It's boring. Yeah. But I like, I prefer the boredom. I've got calm, serenity. Calm. I've got peace. Yeah. yeah mate. Um, and I just, I don't know. I just feel like for anyone out there that's struggling, it is hell for the first, I mean, I went sober the first time around for three or four months and then I come to Christmas and I was like, I ain't even got a problem. Yeah. Because that was easy. Yeah. But the reason why it was easy for me was because I was doing it for her. I was like, all right, I'll stop drinking and I'll prove to everyone I ain't got a problem. So, all right, look, bang, there's the drink. I'm good. Woo. And then I went online. I ain't drinking no more. Yeah. And I got, and then Christmas come and then some things happened in my life that weren't great and I was fucking like itching and I was like Christmas how am I going to get through Christmas and I was like do you know what babe I'm going to I'm going to come out of retirement I said to her and I'm going to have a couple, couple of drinks over Christmas but I ain't doing packet no more yeah. no more gear and I ain't getting smashed and I ain't going out with that crowd and da 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 and the first time I drank three or four pints was fine and I can remember going oh that was alright yesterday and then the second time I drank was alright third time I drank I called it on Yeah. and then I couldn't stop drinking for yeah. I don't know how long it was it, it breaks my heart because it was just before my wedding and I drank all the way through it, through the honeymoon, until massive, massive uh, rock bottom. I got um, kicked out of the house and couldn't see my kids. This, see this, is, kid. this is only a year ago. Is this right? Yeah, because we went, we went to Marbella for, it was my, it was, I had a film coming out that I'd produced with Terry Stone called uh, The Last Heist and I starred in it and produced it. I'd raised the money, shot it through COVID and it was coming out and we'd done a premiere over in Marbella. But I was so excited about it. The night before the premiere, like the day before the premiere, I went out with my pals come back off me now had a massive argument with her and uh she kicked me out basically and you know we had a bust up and then i come back i said can i come back and you know get some bits and we spoke and um she was meant to be coming to my bay with me the next day and i begged her and said please come my bay you know if you you know everyone's expecting you to be there people will see there's a problem the press are going to yeah. be there and all that and she said but don't drink and don't do drugs this weekend i was like it's fucking it's my film premiere i've got a drink but i won't do drugs Again, like mm. trying to, mm. I, I still couldn't see it, right? And as soon as we landed, I started drinking, then I started doing drugs. Yeah. And uh, that was it. She flew back. We had a massive row in front of everyone out there. I said loads of awful stuff because I was off me nut. And uh, she she flew back and uh, I wasn't welcome back. And uh, she she was worried, you know, because 
I stayed there on a bender. I stayed yeah. there for days. Yeah. I was like, I, I ain't, you know, once you start mm. and all that, and look, your so, world's falling apart. Especially in Marbella. Mate, and there's people out there who were <laughs> yeah. like, don't worry about <laughs> it, it's only your kids. <laughs> Let's fucking get another one in. Come on, tell us <laughs> another <laughs> fight story. <laughs> Could you want to? Could you want to put? You know, coming up with business plans in someone's fucking hotel room and talking five in the morning, five in the morning, talking about conspiracy theories when my missus and kids are fucking back home, you know. But fucking, it hit me like a a train, you know. When I when I when when did it hit you? Was it when you were on the come down? I I got uh, well, I had to go home in the end. um, And what year we talking? Twenty two. Yeah, this was well, this was literally a year ago. Yeah, Mm. and I had to go home, and um, uh, I couldn't go home. She wouldn't talk. She was scared, man. That, that, that's the truth of it you know she was I was uh, like if you saw me and my missus now like or how I normally am yeah. I'm like I'm playful I love her I would never shout do you know what I mean um, uh, you know what I mean I'm kind considerate caring you know I'm like lo- loving I'm very like I'm, um, I'm very uh, what's the word like you know I show my affection a yeah, lot. Yeah. So when I shout and when I'm angry and when I'm like losing control because mm. I'm on drink or drugs mm. It, it's it's it, must, it must be really scary for her because mm. she's like well, you're losing your mind you need help right and that's where she was you need help I don't want you around me and the kids but as an addict when someone tells you you need help I'm, gonna, I'm just enjoying gonna, myself yeah you're going to turn it into a pot I'm just having fun yeah uh, you're the problem yeah. why can't you just, You don't appreciate your life I've yeah. provided yeah. And can't, did it always come back to money that I provided the, exactly I did, did it, ego yeah. it's okay. all ego and yeah. uh, and, and that's that, that and it, it breaks uh, we go into that in a minute mm. but um, you know, she was, it was when I was sobering up and coming back and she was like, you know, I'm worried about, through other people, I'm yeah. worried about you being around the kids. I'm like, what? Yeah, Jesus. What? Mm. Me? Mm. And then I, and then I, I had to go and stay somewhere else. So I, I stayed um, in, uh, in my grandma and granddad had passed away through COVID, both of them, unfortunately. And we were selling their house and I said, just randomly said, well, I'll go there. Didn't realise they'd cleared the whole fucking house out of all the furniture. And they just, I got a black bed and went and stayed there in this fucking empty cold house where my grandma got. And do you know what the mad thing is? I fucking didn't even realise. I suddenly, I, I hadn't even fucking realised really that they had died. I'd been in such a drunken stupor for so long that I was like, oh yeah, you two are dead as well. Wow. And, uh, and it was just the worst rock bottom, mate. I was like, for days I couldn't drink, I couldn't sniff because I made a pledge, I'm, I'm getting my family back and I'm going sober. And um, I couldn't speak to certain people because all they wanted to do was sesh. I couldn't go on my phone and work because I was broken. Um, and You were broken spiritually and mentally. I was crying my eyes out yeah, for days, okay. mate. I was crying my eyes out, I don't know if it was the come down or what. And then uh, I had to show her that I was serious, so I went to rehab. And um, I don't really want to talk uh, too much about that stuff just because I, I find that um, a lot of the like AA stuff and it's all quite, I don't know, it's like, um, I, I, it's not for you. No, no. Have you tried doing the 12 yeah, steps? I haven't done the 12 steps, no. but I've done the meetings and the rehab, but I feel like it's such a, so personal and it's so out of respect for other people that yeah. were there. I don't want to go too much into it, yeah. but uh, being out of the environment, yeah. right. And finally sitting there and going, mate, you're fucked. Yeah. Uh, was the best thing that could have happened to me, and and luck, luckily um, she let me back after a certain amount of time, and she I don't know how because it had happened so many times, and she trusted me this time, and now she's she's happy. She sounds like an angel, mate. Yeah, she when I met her, she was a glamour model, and I yeah. was fucking I was on TV, yeah. and she stayed with me when I lost it all, and I couldn't work, yeah. and I was thrown off TV, mm. and I was suicidal when my mm. father passed away. She got me through all of that. Then I fucking turned into an alcoholic, yeah. and she stayed with me through that. And now she's now she's with me a year, a year sober. Mate, and honestly, What's she's Shelley. Shelley, massive shout out to Shelley. Yeah, I love you. Yeah. yeah, wicked. And your two daughters. Yeah, yeah, Neve and Rue. And I've got, to, I've got to say, I've got to say that you know anyone out there that's got kids that that that, that drinks and uses drugs still, and they're getting later on in their life, the kids can tell. Yeah. Um, and if you're struggling. Just, this is what I do. What do I want to imagine them remembering when they're yeah. 16? When they're 16, 17, someone goes, what's your dad like? Or when they're 20, what's your dad like? I don't want them to go, well, yeah, he's good fun yeah. when he drinks, and but he's, he, he didn't really do much at the weekends. Yeah. They'll never know me like that. Yeah. You know, They may have seen a few arguments, but uh, I, I, I will always be sober now. Um, do you know what I mean? So all they all they'll see is um, positivity. Wicked, mate. Tell me how your life changed when social media come about. Yeah. 2008, 
really? Facebook, yeah. Instagram come about a little bit later? I think I, think I was one of the first uh, big social media. Yeah. Uh, I, it was Vine first. Do you remember Vine? Yeah. Yeah, Vine, Six yeah. Second Sex Secrets. What it was, was I was working. I'd come back from the cruise ships, yeah. had a little bit of money, and I set up my own estate agency, a little like lettings firm mm. out of a serviced office. And I was blagging on Gumtree, the properties, and then renting them out, advertising them. And I was making money. I thought I was, I, I, you know, I, I thought I'll do the comedy clubs. And if it works, it works. But if not, I'm going to build a mm. business. And um, then I discovered Vine, and I could take the jokes that I was writing to do on stage, and I could do them while I was working. And then I started collecting followers and I was like, fucking hell, a thousand people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was, it was crazy to me. And then I, it's another addiction. I just got addicted to it. I was like, let's see how fucking far we can push this to see how quickly we can grow it. Uh, and I was one of the first in the UK to, I think when I got like a million followers on Facebook, the only other pages really that had a million on Facebook were like Disney yeah. or Sony. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There wasn't people. Mm. Um, so that era when all my vines were going viral on Facebook and, and stuff. I think nobody had really seen anything like that before. So it sort of and it was full on lad culture <coughs> chat, lad wasn't it? Yeah. I remember. I remember seeing something years ago. I didn't know it was you, in fact, until I've still got it on there. Like you talking about having a day in a session that twenty four hours and whatever. Mm. It went viral around WhatsApp and yeah. Well, well, oh, I know which one was it. Friday night. Yeah. Going out for a couple. Yeah. A couple turns into this and. Yeah, you go for a couple of beers, then it turns into the tequilas, then the tequilas turn into your mate saying, shall we make the call? Then you get a gram in, gram turns to two grams. Next thing you're chewing the bouncer's ear off about <laughs> fights you never had. Then you get horny, so you go to a strip club, drop £130 down some fucking Doris called Candice, <laughs> who she's telling you about why she, when she moved over from the Isle of Wight to suck dick for money for the first time. <laughs> All right? And you run out of money, so you go home and you order a brass on your credit card do more coke she turns up and you can't get a boner you yeah. wake up with friction burns around your cup from wanking yourself silly all night uh, 50 pound note up your nose yeah yeah friction burns on your cup whatever going out no i think i'll stay in yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the one and do you know that's what the one. yeah and do you know what it, the, the craziest thing about yeah. that is all my comedy a certain amount off of the cuff it, it's it's off the cuff yeah. yeah but a certain amount of it it's exaggerated truth yeah you know, I hope my missus ain't watching. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah, maybe not the brasses. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? She so won't call candy. Um, but it's exaggerated truth. So even the stuff that was uh, caused a lot of mayhem and was truly offensive. What uh, really caused what really caused mayhem for you on social media? <clears throat> and we can go into what caused mayhem when you got filmed live doing your show, yeah. which caused a problem. But what was the bit where you thought, "Hold oh, on, I'm overstepping the mark here," and it's going viral? Well, the thing is, right, I'm like. <clears throat> Because well, overstepping the mark is a different thing. Lad's culture who was yeah. listened to it found it properly funny. Yeah, it's, but then there's a whole load of other people who might not find it funny. Yeah, it's difficult because uh, I'm a businessman, really. Yeah, right. I've got, like even now I've got multiple businesses, and I, I I look at things from a business perspective, and I did then. Yeah, and I simply just fucking honed in on what was working. Yeah, and, and really pushed it. And so I'm like a social media guru. I fucking I know the ins and outs. Yeah. I know how the interactions help the reach and you know i know i know how to you know buzzwords trends all of that shit and for me whether the whether the response initially was good or bad it went viral yeah do you know what i mean like it was back in the day on facebook if you wrote on there i hate this this guy's a twat all your followers on Facebook, all your friends yeah. would see it right so i i worked out very quick that the most powerful way to grow and to to be successful was by being marmite mm. straight down the middle mm. you have to have just as many people who dislike your work that like your work if everyone loves your work it'll only go so far yeah. the, the people that dislike it interact on social media more than the people that like it yeah it's just a negative world mm. um so you've got to find a niche that's controversial and for me the most controversial thing that I, that, that, that I knew about back then was going out, drinking, mm. doing drugs and shagging girls because mm. that's what I was doing, right? So in my thinking, let's just really exaggerate that, you know? <laughs> but to me, yeah. the funny thing about Dapper Last was he yeah. always lost. Yeah. He, he, he That's what I could never get. It's like, you know, this is a character that always lost. I'm showing you how stupid lad culture is. I'm yeah. showing you how ridiculous us men think. But the problem that the media and uh and rightly so i think now that i've got daughters i look yeah. at it in a completely different light is that 
it does influence people. Yeah. So a sketch, uh, like I'll give you an example. I always use this example. A sketch of me, you know, with an even though it's an actress walking down the street and going, "Excuse me, sweetheart, can I smell your fanny?" Mm. And she's like, "No, you can't." I'm like, "Well, it must be your feet then." <laughs> it's a joke, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it may encourage men to go out to women and go to say I, that. Yeah, can I smell your fanny, right? Yeah. And back then I was like, "Well, no one's stupid enough to do that." People are, yeah, right. And now that I've got daughters, I'm like, "Well, is that the sort of shit I want?" Yeah. Lads, her age when she's in school, seeing and doing, no, it isn't. So. I've got to look back and go, yeah, but I didn't give a fuck at the time. Yeah. I didn't. And you were mid-20s, 25, 26, yeah, 10, 27? 10, yeah. 10, 10, 10, 10, 11, 12 years ago, yeah. I was a twat. It's as simple as that. I didn't have a care in the world. So by being that, how did you get a show on ITV? Uh, it was simply because of the numbers, really. really? And, and, you know, you've got a million followers here. You've got, you know, a million on Snapchat. You've got a million. They're like, right, they're viewers. Yeah. And... Um, I didn't actually come up with the concept for uh, the, the TV show. What year was the TV show? 2014. 14, okay. And um, and it's the same producers that produced, um, what's his name? Lee Francis' show. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what it's called now, but, you know, and, you know, they took what my character was, what it was, and was like, right, what do people like? The most viral videos were like the six second sex secrets, the sex tips, the pulling bird tips. Yeah. You know, my catchphrase is proper moy she knows. Yeah. It was all like women oriented, teaching men how to shag girls and pool girls. And that's how they come up with a concept for Dapper Laughs on the Pool. So ITV even backed that? ITV, ITV2 um, got uh, essentially the, pro the production team of their top show. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of said, yeah, if you produce it, we'll make it. And then the production team went away and made it. Wow. And produced it. So yeah. they were, they even backed you with that with that culture back then? They even backed me when it was going wrong. I mean, you know, ITV2, when when the, um, when the, when the, it's like, it's a bit like Russell Brand, you know, back in the day, yeah. it, you know, he was Shaggy of the Year. Everyone loved yeah. it. At the beginning, when we were getting negative feedback from the thing going out there, like, whatever man it's trending yeah. do you know what I mean whatever but bad publicity is good all about whatever. eyeballs on the telly until yeah. one day nah fuck it you know 60,000 people signed a petition to cancel the show that's when they've got to go like, right, you know, okay. we, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't redoing it and um, it, it was tough it, it's, it was crazy but how long was that how long was that when you got the call from ITV2 I didn't get a call it was, it was, how did it work it, was, it had done a season and yeah. then they just put a tweet out no, no what I'm saying is how did you get the call to go right we want we want you now on TV we've seen you all over socials we want you to be a face now on telly my ma no my manager uh, it starts off with uh, we're going to talk to ITV yeah we, we think we can my manager saying we think we can get you on ITV uh, I, I, you know my manager had an in there uh, and then pitched me and said, look, this is the guy, this is the stats, you know. And then and then uh, they looked at my stuff and then come back and said, right, if you can come up with a good concept, we'll take it. Then they they, they got the, the, we had to get a production team to come up with a concept and they said, don't worry, we know a production team. Yeah. So ITV basically lined it up and then the production team uh, came up with an idea of a concept mm. that they signed off and then the production team goes into it, writes each episode, finds the guests, writes each episode, writes the sketches that are in each episode and I just performed them like they gave me scripts. Quality. And how long did that last for? Was that like a weekly one season? Thing? Yeah. And what's one season? One, uh, six episodes. Six episodes. Yeah. And during that time, how did your personal profile Fucking hell, mate. I was making loads of money going to clubs. Yeah. I mean, you got to imagine, I was 20 years old. Yeah. I had a TV show on ITV2 about pulling birds. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was all right looking. I had a bit of dough and I was getting paid to go to nightclubs to get, for people to have selfies with me. I was living the fucking dream. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I was drinking hard to get through it. It was surreal. It ha it, uh, one minute I was running my estate agents and the next minute people were walking up to me in the street for selfies. And then the next minute, I mean, I was getting selfies anyway from the viral videos. Yeah. But the next minute I was on TV. Now I sold my offer to the estate agents to my business partner and I'm like, I'm going to be famous. I'll yeah. see you later. And, um, and then I was planning out the rest of my career. I started doing tours, um, started doing tours, and that's when you know it all it, like it was over as soon as it started. Wow! So one season, six weeks, six shows. Yeah. You think you're going to smash everything? I think I'm done now. I'm on ITV. They even had ITV even had me going and doing talks um, for their brand. You know, in front of in front of you know big talks about how to write comedy and you know. Before. Did anyone give you a tug in that in that period in those six weeks? Going, hold on, mate. You need a load no, of time. No, they were going push. Were they? They were going push. Go for it. Yeah, push more, harder, more, especially my management. Especially, you know, I'd put, I'd get, I had a bird. I started, I started seeing my wife, right? So I was like, wanted to put stuff on my social media about, oh, no, no, it's out of character. Push the shagging stuff. Right. So, yeah, you know, it's money. It's how money, much money. Do you remember how much money you want from that show? 
Yeah, it wasn't a great deal. I couldn't, like, 50 grand, 30 grand, something, nice. something like that. It was all right. It yeah. was good money at the time. But, I mean, I was making fucking, I was making two, three grand a night doing personal appearances. And at all doing, the clubs around the country. all the clubs, and I was doing three of them a week. Um, I was selling products. I was selling, like, fucking, I was selling moist products, you know, moisture cards, yeah. you know, like oyster cards, yeah, moisture yeah. cards. I had fucking everything. I was, I was making good money, man. I was making... Uh, brand deals doing stuff on that I, I tour tour you know a few hundred grand from tour tour, tour stuff and all this and so were you doing tour while you're on telly yeah yeah because so give like, me an example of a tour you'll go to a theatre with older thousand people yeah, yeah 500 show. people and do, do a show. show I was doing the uh, the O2 academies at the time yeah okay yeah and there's loads of them around the UK isn't there? yeah yeah so they were they were creating tours lining them up selling them who was creating them lining them were you guaranteed your wedge then or were you like no, I'll take the door money I'll do it myself or were you guaranteed a fee to bit everyone yeah, I didn't understand the industry then, yeah. so um, it, uh, I got skinned alive really with a lot of it. Not now knowing what I know, mm. but essentially what will happen is a big, a uh, big um, promoter will come to you and say, "Right, there's there's twenty dates." Yeah, say for instance, yeah. I mean, actually, I, the tour that I'm doing in January is the biggest one I've ever done in my mm. life. Back then, it was like five to ten, five, six, seven dates, eight yeah. dates. I'm doing thirty in January, so it's, it's weird. It's completely, it's blowing my mind really, mm. but. Back then, it would be like, right, say, for instance, there's 10,000 tickets and 10,000 tickets would equate to 150 grand's worth mm. of revenue. The promoter will buy you out of that revenue for okay. like 70 grand. Okay. All right, and say, so, right, here's 70 grand. So up, he's guaranteeing up. his dough and go, yeah. right, there's your money. It's guaranteed. And, and hopefully okay. it sells out yeah, so okay. they get a profit. Yeah. Right? And back then, it was selling out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But for that, they were organising the venues, putting the date together, yeah. putting the tour together. And, and essentially promoting it, but they weren't really promoting it. I was selling it on you social media, yeah. yeah. And I learned very quickly as soon as I as soon as I got dropped from my management and dropped by everyone, the you know. And then the manager would take twenty percent out yeah. of that. And actually, my manager, when I was doing the, the club PA bookings, they were using a different company to book me. They mm. were taking ten percent. Then my management was taking twenty percent. Then they were taking travel out of it. Then I was getting taxed on it. It was fucking oh, mad. Man. So once I started having to do things on my own, yeah. Um, start to realise everything my films I yeah. make myself you know I mean this time around the 30 date tour I had to get a promoter well I tried many times to to do big tours in the last 10 years by yourself by myself and yeah. I just couldn't do it yeah. no no. why what did you find venues hard? just wouldn't they, they, it's too it, brand association with the venue yeah, yeah, in your because, name okay. because when when, every, when I got cancelled um, all the all the people that were going mad about my shit online, you know, all the journalists, like it was the news publications, they'd contact the venues. Are you really yeah. having this guy there? Yeah. Are you really? And then the venues started dropping. And then anyone that would have me, the other venues would be like, ah, oh, and it was just mad. It just felt so, once they'd been burned and all of them had lost money, yeah. the big ones and the tour, and the promoters had lost money and everything. You come back and go, I want to do a show. They're like, sorry, mate. Yeah. So I worked out very quick that none of the venues independently would take me yeah. for a long time. So I just went to the, I done like the Troxy a few years yeah. ago, two or three years ago, but they're different. They're like, you give us fucking fifteen grand up front, you can do what you want with it. Yeah. There's no risk. The big ones, but like for the small three, four hundred seaters, it's not worth yeah. their risk. But so I done a Troxy one to see if anyone would come to my show, and we sold that out. Then I done a little O uh, two one, and funnily enough, I went on GB News recently, mm -hmm. and it all it, this all came about through my sobriety podcast. Yeah. So I truly great honest, podcast, by the way. Anyone listening out there, check out. Dan Sobriety podcast. Yeah, Menace to Sobriety. Menace Sobriety, yeah. Yeah, and it, it it truly is, I owe everything to sobriety because through the sobriety, the positive things have happened. Yeah. Because through the sobriety, I've been able to sort of... Express yeah, you. But, but also, like, admit yeah. that I got a lot wrong, you yeah. know? Admit that I was a shit partner for a lot of things. Admit that I was being a crap dad. But more importantly, admit that some of the comedy that I did back then because for years I thought to myself, oh, I was a scapegoat and hard done by and the industry fucked me. Yeah. And da, da, da. No, you was a bit of a twat, yeah. right? You was a bit of a so twat. So when you're looking back and seeing what you were saying on some of the shows, you think, hold on a minute, that's below the belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I laugh, don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. Because there's two sides to me. I'm yeah. like, yeah, but fuck it. Yeah. But there's another side to me. Like, I get it now. Yeah. I get it. I was immature. And all I, all I cared about back then was growth, yeah. money. Fame. Numbers. Numbers. People, yeah. I thought yeah. it was happening. This is how it happens. Yeah. Push, push, push. But there was and no one there to guide you. No. And you were like the pioneer of it as well. Yeah, and plus my mum was gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? My dad, my relationship with my dad was on and off. I didn't really see my old man much, but when, when he saw things blowing up, he did try and get involved and did try and steer me. Yeah. But I was, I, I knew it all. But I was immature. I was a young lad, yeah. right? I did, and I didn't give a fuck about important issues. Like, yeah. you know, 
whatever they were saying. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But um, So I want to go back to that 2014 then. You've done that series there. Yeah. You're thinking, oh, I've made it. Everyone's yeah. going to want a piece of me. Tell me how the strength of the cancel culture, what that did to you personally. Oh, it's horrific. Honestly, it was horrific. It was. It all happened. It. Uh, I can't explain it. it, get, it I, I swear I must have like PTSD from it because... It, like any headlines that come out about me now, any little news articles and stuff like that, it's like, yeah. it fucking hits me, the anxiety, but it uh, it was overwhelming. It's like no one, it's like fucking, it went from the best being me. Yeah. Like it went from being like, I wouldn't, didn't want to be anyone else. I was like, I'm the fucking boy. It was like mm. the best thing being me to, oh my God, I just don't want to be me anymore. How can I, I can't get out of this skin. I can't get out of this body. I can't get away from this. And uh, it was frustrating because it was calculated. I could see how calculated and orchestrated it was. Um, and, I f and I fed into the, the, their hands. Did you feel it coming? I could feel it. I, 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 yeah, because first off, they were, the, the journalists for a long time were moaning about my content. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, this is dangerous. He's dangerous. The comedy industry hated me. Stand up yeah. comedians were like, he ain't a real comedian. Yeah. He's a social media influencer. Or not, not even that. He he makes videos online. They didn't know what I was, yeah. but he kept. I kept keep, keep, keep being called comedian, dapper last comedian, and so stand up comedians, which by the way are the biggest bitches on the planet. Yeah, they're just like fucking handbags at dawn. A lot of them, because uh, they're all striving to. Uh, when someone gets through, it's like yeah, and um, you know they they didn't know that I'd done cruise ships. They didn't, you know, I never spoke about that. I didn't speak about the years I'd done the open mic circuit. There's a handful of people that knew, but the industry as a whole didn't. And when I got my TV show, that was it. They were like, fuck him. Yeah. How's he? He's misogynistic. He's that. He's everything yeah, we yeah, don't understand. Yeah. So it's slowly all turning against me. But what really tipped me, and I was arguing with a journalist as well, which was which was bad. Yeah. If a Online? Yeah, because yeah. I had such power on Twitter. I had like an army of people. And if a journalist would put a piece up saying, I'm misogynistic and I hate women, mm. I was so immature. I'd be like, how do I, f I but I used to rail them up. Yeah. So I'd be like, how do I hate women? I'm shagging loads of them or yeah. something like that. But also I used to, I didn't used to at the publication, I'd find the journalist and then I'd at the journalist and be like, so you'd out the journalists online. Yeah, and okay. if, it, if, if they'd said something that just wasn't true, yeah, you know, if they'd paint, but I, I really took criticism really difficult mm. back then because in my mind I'd created this alter ego yeah. that was pretty misogynistic and da da, -da yeah. but I wasn't, mm. you know. But they were saying I was, but the truth was, is probably I probably I was a bit yeah. back then. I must have been to be able to create the content, yeah. and the, the hardest criticism to take is stuff that fucking might be true, right? Yeah, um, and my family has been affected by sexual violence as well which no one really knows about. I'd never really spoken about. What do about. you mean your family's been Just, affected of sexual violence? There's stuff that's happened in my family that uh, I've, I've never really spoken about it. I don't know if I can or, I'm, or I should, but um, bad things have happened. Not my immediate family, but in my greater family with people in the family and... Uh, what, since you've been cancelled? No, a while or before while. and stuff like that. And it was apparent, you know, like dark stuff. Okay. Know? Uh, I don't really know if I. It's, that's just. It's, sorry, mate. It's a tricky situation because it's my family, yeah, right? Of course. Um, but uh, so the stuff you were talking about was going on in your family. Is that what? Is that, was that the uh, link in a different yeah, style? Yeah, ki kind of. Yeah, it was like you know, my family. We'd exp you know, we'd exp experience or we, we, certain people in the family were going through real, you know, yeah. sexual violence, so yeah. to speak, or. You know, um, I'm Stuff. sure you, I'm sure you can yeah. fill in the yeah, dots yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. younger people yeah. in my family, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, were they looking up to you? Well, what who? Your family members looking up to you? Go, well, if he's given all that content, we're allowed to do this, or was it that kind of feel? What are you talking about? About what happened with yeah, my family? Yeah. Well, no, it's not. It's were not, they listening to what you were saying? No, going, if he can that. say it, it's fine. No, it's no. not that. It's. I'll just say it's like you know one of my uncles in my family was doing inappropriate things with younger people in my yeah. family. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So, um, and what the reason why there's the context of why that is relevant is because uh, it's got nothing to do with the content I was doing. But when the media started portraying me as pro, yeah, and um, uh, you know anti women, yeah, um, and that was a big one they used pro, yeah, um, and that my show was an almanac for culture they yeah. were saying that my itv2 show was um teaching men how to go out with women yeah when it was it was teaching i mean it was stupid but it was teaching men how to talk to women through yeah. comedy and content yeah it, it upset me it yeah. really upset me and i was drinking a lot of the time and i was pretty angry and um there was a big piece that came out 
Dapper Laughs, new TV show, Almanac for Culture. And I went on stage that night and I was angry about it. And they were saying that, you know, I'd created a guide for yeah. mental women. Yeah. And um, that's why the word was even in, in my vocabulary that night. And yeah. I was talking about it and I went out on stage and I was like, I simply said, you know, if I wanted to, if, you know, I'm angry about this piece, if I wanted to make a guide mm. for men to women, I wouldn't have shot six 30 minute episodes mm. and done all the comedy and the sketches and everything mm. like that. I would have done a, a one one minute episode and said, go down the road, get some duct tape, or, um, some rope, whatever. Yeah, and yeah, I said yeah, all yeah. this dumb stuff. And then the press had taken a video of it and, and got the beginning bit where I said, go down the yeah. road, get some duct tape. And they half bit pieced it together and put it out. And that was it, it was over. It was Literally, over. it was over. I within up. overnight, yeah, bang. I, I woke up and the, it was going viral, and then all the publications were asking what ITV were going to do about it. Then I was I was doing charity work. They the journalists there was like three or four publications that one would do the story, then the others would feed, then another one would do the story, yeah, then okay. the others would do it, and yeah. it was like boom, boom, and then it was and then I was trending on Twitter. I was trending for days on Twitter. Then the announcement come out, ITV, that, well, 60,000 people petition, petition hits 10,000, petition hits 20,000. Then when it got to 60,000, ITV to have jumped ship, uh, he's canceled, he's not coming back on. I was raising money for home, for a homeless charity at the time. I had a Christmas single out and uh, I, I'd said, I'd, I'd done a joke about a tramp in it. Mm. Uh, the journalist picked up on that, contacted the homeless charity. Then the homeless charity done a thing oh, saying, my. saying we're not taking money from him. Mm. Um, yeah, and then the management said the other artists on the on the rota, they had other famous people on the rota, they were getting targeted by the journalists. Journalists, how do you feel about being on the same rota as yeah. Dapper Lasp? So then the manager went, sorry, the other artists don't like it, you're out. Yeah. So then I got dropped from that. Then I got sued because the dates were falling on the tour. So a load of money that I hadn't even earned, I had to pay. It, what, that, refunds? Like, re, yeah, but also there's clauses in the yeah. contracts, all this jazz, I didn't understand it. Bookings dropped, obviously no more PAs. Um, and then my dad died, oh, all within mate. the space of like all in twenty fourteen. All, all, all in yeah, it was it, all in the space of like six months. Bloody yeah, and that was it, mate. That was it. How on earth? How on earth do you deal with something like cocaine and drink? Yeah, okay, but how do you deal with it? You get waking up in the morning seeing your front pages of this, front know. pages. It's a blur, of that. mate. It's a blur. It's so a blur. were you just getting bang on it and trying to cut it all out? Yeah, this is the problem with alcohol and uh, drugs. Is if if you can't cope with life anyway, mm. through whatever's happened in your childhood and stuff like that, if you can't cope with your emotions, uh, which I think I've always struggled with, um, and you use drinking drugs, you know, for fun and stuff like that, but also it turns into, instead of using it like sociably, you start using it on your own, yeah. or if you've had a stressful week, you use it, or if yeah. something bad happens, you use it, and you get into that habit of using drink and drugs to soothe yourself. Yeah. It's a coping mechanism. When massive shit goes wrong, you hit, you go, I need my coping mechanism yep. and that's all I need. Okay. So that's when I started drinking in a day. That's when I was sniffing coke on my own. That's why I was turning on the fucking news and I was seeing 200 people on the telly debate. Like it was like, Jer like a Jeremy Carl set in like Channel 4 had like loads of people in there and they were debating dapper laughs, misogynistic or funny. And oh, I was sitting mate. there doing lines of coke going, I can't fucking, but I was only having a laugh. <laughs> Do you know what oh, I mean? Mate. It's mad. And then my manager contacted me after and I, I, well, no, I contacted my manager because I was losing my mind, mm. my ex-manager, and I said they won't stop. You know, the paps outside and it's, it's, paps outside your house. Yeah, as well. and it had been going on for months, and uh, you know, uh, I, I just said, you know, what can we do? I just need to stop this because I'm losing my mind. Like I, I don't want to fucking be in this situation anymore. Surely it's going to stop, right? Uh, and he said, well, Newsnight want to talk to you maybe if you talk to Newsnight and apologise they'll they'll hold back Big, one of the biggest regrets of my life really. going on that with that woman on going on there yeah. yeah sort of like a lamb to slaughter I yeah. mean I needed to be held accountable for some of the stuff I said but I shouldn't have done it so early I was broken I was like completely broken you look broken on yeah that. I was broken yeah. and, the, and, the, and the bad thing about it as well is there was a certain amount of my audience that Still kind, supporting you. Yeah, yeah, so my audience were like, look, some of the stuff you said was across the line, but we know you're not. And that's what broke my heart. It always broke my heart. It's like, there's no malice. There was no malice, yeah. right? I didn't want women to get, so I didn't want, I didn't want men to be misogynistic. Yeah. Of course I didn't. Yeah. I was just a twat, right? Yeah. And um, my audience knew that. And, uh, you know, 5 million people followed me online. Mm. 60,000 signed a petition. Yeah. You know, but in my mind, all I saw was 60,000 yeah. people hating me, the comedy industry hating me, the TV industry didn't want me and I couldn't work. I didn't see the 5 million people that were there. Mm. When I went on the news, I turned my back on them. Yeah. I said, I'm sorry, Dapper Laughs is wrong. I don't want to do it no more, I quit. I just, and I was just like, please stop, leave me alone, yeah. you know. How long did this go on for? 
it went on for a year at least. It must have. Uh, was it like well, no, actually, the, it went on for five, six years that yeah. I was the poster boy for misogyny. Yeah. Every time anything happened in the news or... It comes back to you. It come back to me, okay. yeah. But how long was this intensity? But a good six months. Well, for six... Well, the initial fucking madness yeah. was about a month. It was like, it was like hell. Mm. Like, I mean, surreal. Like, even my friends didn't want to be around me. Yeah. Yeah, my fucking missus stayed with me through all of that. Yeah, I was about to say, I was about to bring your yeah, missus up so she stuck with you. I know. Um, and, uh, yeah, and uh, oh, but when my father died, I checked out. I was done. I was done. So that was like the... That was, that that was, was another coffee, kick, yeah. wasn't it? Not, yeah. I was like, the, the with my father, my my dad was the only one. So everyone else was going, are you all right? Fucking hell, that's mm, bad. No, mm. you'll bounce back or, or, you know, fucking hell, that's mm. bad. Why have they done that? Fucking da da Shit, you're all right, or do you want to get on it? Mm. He was the only one that go, who give you a TV show anyway? Yeah, it's their fault. Yeah, it's yeah. Their fault. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is just like you at school, mate. Yeah, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. He's like, but look how look at what you did do. Yeah, look at what you made. You blagged it, mate. You yeah. got on there, you yeah. know. He had this great attitude with it, and he was like, What's next? Yeah, you wicked. Know? what's your old man's name? Patrick, wicked. Patrick O'Reilly, yeah. And um, he uh, yeah, you know, I loved my dad because he regretted how he was when he was younger. He was trying to make up. But he made for up for it when yeah. you were an adult. Yeah, and he was it. really fucking, he was like my number one fan. He yeah. was on the fucking phone. He even started doing his own videos on Vines and everything yeah. like that. But um, so when he, uh, he had a stroke, I got a phone call one day saying that he's, from my stepmom saying he's had a stroke, get over it. He lived in Guernsey and I flew over and he come out of his stroke and I spoke to him when he come out and he was gone. His mind yeah. was, something was up with him. He was talking, he was cracking jokes, yeah. like funny jokes. And you know, he was like, I had a stroke and I was like, yeah, I heard. He's like, yeah, so would you have if you'd seen the fucking nurse. Mm. You know what I mean? Look at this. Was, yeah, and I was like, you're all right. He's like, yeah, but, and then he was saying weird stuff to me, you know, okay. look after your brother and uh, I don't feel right and you know, all this stuff. And then he, while I was while I was talking to him, he went. Yeah. Right? And then he never come back. Uh, and then my stepmom and my brother couldn't, um, they were distraught. Yeah. They lived over there with him. Uh, and I had to make the decision to turn the machine off with the doctor. Yeah. The three of us were in the room. And I, he, I said, you know, I said, what would you do to mm. the doctor? Yeah, because they weren't making a decision. Mm. And I said to the doctor, what would you do? And he said, well, he's, it's called coning, I think it is, yeah. where the brain stem detaches from the brain. Yeah. He's like, he's alive technically, but you'll never be able to do anything, yeah. you know? And he was an entertainer. So I said, yeah, just let him go. Mm. And my brother never really forgave me for that. We only just started speaking recently, and that was in 2017. So that was hard. Um, but I was angry at my dad for dying and I freaked out when they did turn the machine off because yeah. I had to wait for his family to come over as well and then they turned the machine off and I lost my mind and from that point for uh, uh, oh and fucking a couple of days later my, my missus she was we were told that we couldn't have kids at the time mm. she had polystivic ovaries mm. she told me that she was pregnant mm. and uh, I lost my and that was even worse it wasn't a good thing that why? Was a, just couldn't handle it okay I'd already checked out I was like I'd already worked out how much money I had, how long that would last me, what I could do with it. And I just wanted to drink and use drugs and then die. To be honest, I did. And I knew that. I thought, I, I, I kind of, I was like, mm. I was like, if you do that to me, my career, I don't know who I was speaking to, the universe yeah. or God or whatever, but I was like, you do that. And then now you've done that, you can fuck off. Like, mm. I ain't even going to try and be nice. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I ain't even going to try and survive this. So I left, uh, you know, I just cut her off. And one, another big regret of my life and I moved in with my fucking coke dealer and uh, I know it's insanity that's bonkers it's isn't it? insanity yeah, yeah and then I lost months a month well I lost I don't know six weeks or something like that I'd lost all I'd gone through all my money by then and and uh, had my one of my rock bottoms where I was, uh, yeah, I remember he had a big I, I was talking about this the other day had a big new he'd done up this room for me to stay in there white carpet and I was just through the night sniffing gear on my own on a black bed and I was thinking about cutting my wrists, but I didn't want to fuck his carpet up because it was a new white carpet. Mm. And then suddenly I snapped out of it mm. and I was like, what are you fucking doing? And mm. I, I rang the Samaritans. I legitimately rang the Samaritans. I didn't want to speak to, I couldn't speak to my missus. I didn't want to worry my mum and my friends. They weren't going to get it. And luckily I spoke to the Samaritans and uh, uh, still couldn't really recognise it. it was drinking drugs were destroying me, yeah. but I knew that I was suicidal. And, um, and that was the beginning um, of me sorting my shit out, got back mm. with my missus. What year was this? 2017. 17, okay. Got back with my missus and uh, moved, moved. Uh, we didn't have, I didn't have anywhere to live, didn't have mm. no money. So I moved up to Manchester and moved into a spare room of her mum's little, she got a fucking semi-detached house in Tilsley. Yeah. And I moved into the spare room, me, my dog, and a pregnant missus. And that, that's, that's where I started my life again. Wow, that's some journey. 
mad, isn't it? Mm. And yeah. And then tell me throughout that period then, when did Big Brother come about in 2018? How did that come about? You obviously weren't in the best mm. mind state to be going on telly again. What made you think I need to go on telly again? <laughs> they offered it to me when my dad died. You okay. know, they're fucking brutal. Yeah. Like it's a it's a psychology like psychological test, isn't yeah. it? They look for fucked up people yeah. and they're like perfect. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but, uh, but I didn't uh, fame and TV and notoriety and being noticed was the last fucking thing on my mind I was I was losing the will to live right so I didn't even respond this was a different agent a different manager had come to me and said to me we've got big brother you know it's 20 grand da, da, da. and even though I was broke I was like no way I was like I, I, I didn't want to see another camera or yeah. pap or anything and I was like no way they approached me a little while later when I had my first daughter for the next season and said would you come and do it on another season and I said no and then uh, uh, we their money then yeah. you know we, we wanted to move back to London and I didn't have no money man and um, it was Year of the Woman and they come to me and they said look it's Year of the Woman we need a villain that the press are going to go mad for. Uh, I, I was still broken, but I needed the money. And um, I said, 100 grand and I'll do it. And uh, they came back with 80 and I said, let's go. So, but it's brutal because if you don't survive it and you want to get out of it, you don't get your money. Right, okay, I was about to say, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and what uh, was that experience like for you, knowing you're going to have 100 cameras, knowing the whole of the UK is going to be watching you, knowing that, the papers are going to be writing and bringing up old stuff again. It's reading the press and you've got no contact with the outside world. It's horrible. It yeah. was horrific. I really, really struggled the first week or so. I like had multiple breakdowns. Like um, My dad was really fresh in my mind and he died the January before. So it was his birthday and it was like his birthday and, you know, the, the, the date of when he died as well. And I was really conscious of, remembering him on them days and they wouldn't tell me what the date was and I got all confused about that in the first week and I was upset and also I was worried about what the press was saying and how Shelley and my daughter was coping and I kept on going to the diary room and asking what are they saying about me because I, and, then, and then the first few times people got voted for you know I went in and I was being nice to everyone and then suddenly I was I was up for eviction so I couldn't work it out yeah. and I'm deeply insecure. I was I was even more so insecure then, but I was de I'm deeply insecure as I'm a people pleaser anyway. I've yeah. been performing my old life for people to fucking like me, right? Yeah. And um, I was like, no, they don't like me. What have I said? What have I done? You know, and I was drinking in there, heavy. So I was having- You allowed a booze in there, Yeah, yeah, mate. Yeah, they, they're fucking, mate, there comes a certain point in the day where they say the, the storeroom is now open yeah. and you open the door and it's fucking booze, mate. Yeah. So I was like, warm. You know, just escaping. So fuck knows what I was doing the night before, and then I was waking up and I was like, oh, "Fuck!" Mate. And then they were they were putting me up for eviction, and the doors were opening, and they were reading out my name, and they were, they were Daniel, and it's like, "Boo!" I was like, "Fuck, oh, mate!" No. So I was like, and I tell you how I got through it the first like week or so. I was I was getting put up for eviction all the time, but I was just naughty. I was being I was still being naughty. I was saying silly things and funny things. I was just being myself, yeah. right? I was yeah. I'm a bit of a twat, you know mm. what I mean? I, um, if I think something's funny, I say it. So that was kind of rubbing some people up the wrong way. And I just slowly, it's like sobriety, but in a different way. Um, I slowly just had to sit with that rejection from the housemates or whatever and ride through it. But I was doing laps of the garden with my dad in my, in my mind. Mm. I was going out to the garden. It's like, it's like when you cage an animal, right? yeah. it goes mental. Mm. I was going out and that, even Big Brother was calling me up going, are you all right? You know, with noticing certain behavior. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just walking with my dad, man. Yeah. I need to clear my head. And I was walking and I was talking to my father in my mind as I was walking around and that was getting me through some days. And then something clicked uh, where I started to relax and I just sort of said, just be yourself. And the second week was a bit easier. Then I stopped getting put up for eviction. And then um, and then I was just, I made it more or less to the end. And I got, and then, and then sort of, I, I came out to fucking um, cheers and applause. Brilliant. So I think what what it done for me, giving you the confidence that people like you. Yeah, and what yeah. it done for me was it showed the nation. I mean, there's still people out there that are going to hate me. They always are, mm. but it showed the nation that I wasn't malice. I yeah. was just a twat. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So 2018, you came out. That brought your profile back again. When you come out, how were you looked at by the media? How were you looked at by other comedians? How were you looked at by the lo by people in the population here in the UK? It's not as big as you think it is, Big Brother. No, you know, it was like a dying program. Yeah. So. It's not that big a deal. I came out and it was like, all right, he's done Big Brother. 
Did it, what did it do for your profile? Nothing. It was like, you can still fuck off. We, we ain't giving him a TV <laughs> show. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. It just kind of, it kind of fucking, it just kind of, it's like I'm not, it's, it wasn't even like I'm back. It yeah. was like, I just come out, I've done Loose Women as well. Straight away yeah. they said they want you on Loose Women. So I went on, I thought, show face. Mm. That, that's the worst thing that I could go on Loose Women. I went on show face. I was like, yeah, you know, I've done that and I've done yeah. this, but I'm me. And uh, it kind of just, I think it just kind of set the thing that like, he ain't going nowhere. Yeah. You know, you know, you haven't got rid of him. Uh, and that was it. It was then, then it was like, then, but then I was ready to graft again. I come yeah. back, I was like, right, let's go. I'm back to work. So how are you thinking about earning a pound note when you come out there? Business outside of, I was like, how can I monetize the following? How can okay. I turn, how can I, uh, it was straight up business for me for, yeah. for then. I was like, I kind of thought maybe the comedy was over because when I was doing comedy, I was still getting a lot of negativity. There was still, every, it, like the, it was too, it was hard to do comedy and see fucking pro rate. What, all, what, all, all the comments, comments below. Okay, yeah, 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 for yeah, years yeah. it was yeah, like that. Okay. Now, if you go on my Instagram, it's all positive. Yeah. I mean, you get the occasional twat, yeah. but, Back then, it was all negative, negative. and you okay. get the occasional positivity. Okay. And um, so I was like, that's hard. So I just, every basically what I did, mate, it's, it's not rocket science, was every, my demographic was mainly men, and there's certain products and things that men consume. Yeah. And there's certain businesses out there uh, that would co regularly come to me to promote. And I started saying no to the promotion and trying to negotiate small percentages of their company yeah. and, and their businesses yeah. um and I, I got a few deals like that and i helped build a couple of brands that blew up um and still retain some, some of it now mm. uh some of them said no so i started my own uh brands and yeah. my own products you know give me an I, example of what you said i said it i was selling through lockdown for instance i, I was selling beer laughs beer yeah it was uh ironically uh fucked me through lockdown i was just <laughs> promoting i'm promoting i'm promoting <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If I could have sold cocaine, yeah, fuck me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like like anything you think of, uh, all the different industries that men consume, sex, gambling, yeah. uh, fucking alcohol, um, or, you know, I've got a nightclub. Yeah. Um, Where's the club? That's in Clapham. I'll turn it into a comedy club now. Um, Clapham My Street, Clapham Junction. Uh, Clapham North. Clapham, Clapham North, North is yeah, it? Yeah, I used yeah. to live there. Yeah, did you? Mm. Do you know the railway arches? Yeah. Yeah, one of them. Is it there? Is it? Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, but, you know, morally, uh, anything to do with addiction I've sold or dropped or yeah. stopped like the beer I just stopped it yeah. uh, made great money from it and loads of other little things loads yeah. of other like apps and yeah. da -da -da -da, bits and bobs but I, I created a lot of my own businesses mm. as well I created mm. my own sort of things uh, and events and all, all stuff like that but I managed to make a lot of money mate good so, for you good for you yeah. what was the point when you said we spoke about it earlier. It was a year ago. You're going right. I am stopping booze. Yeah. I'm stopping drugs. I'm stop. I want to be the best dad I can be and the best husband I can be. Yeah. And that was 12 months ago. How many years you've been smashing the backside out of it in total? Do you reckon until you said right? I am stopping for life now. I'd probably. How give old are you today? I'm 39, okay. and I, I probably started hitting it really hard when I was in Cyprus and never stopped. Just what age? 20. 21, 20, oh, okay. 20. So what's that, 19 years? So you've had a good 20 year stint, haven't you? Every weekend. Yeah. Every weekend. I'd find it. But that weekend and then creep into a Thursday, or you'd yeah. want to celebrate a Tuesday because something was happened. Or, okay. I was fucked. I was fucked. And, and if you're out there doing it now, just at the weekends, you've got to remember by the time you recover, you're mm. back straight back on it. And people, you know, I thought I was bipolar. I thought I suffered with anxiety and depression. Yeah. But that had nothing to do with my drinking. Yeah. I was like, my drinking's my life, right? Yeah. I go and enjoy myself with my mates. But why have I got anxiety all the time? Why don't I? Why have I got depression? The anxiety. Was, Give me an example of anxiety. Like waking up with worry and not well, knowing okay. why. You know, waking up with worry and not knowing why, or having having moments in the day where you're nervous and worried, but right. not knowing why, right? Okay. But now I know what it is. Okay. Withdrawal from alcohol. Yeah. It's withdrawal symptoms from alcohol and cocaine. And also, what I've learned through my sobriety is when you smash the granny out of your dopamine receptors mm. all weekend, cocaine. Like if you have one sip of beer, you get of dopamine, yeah. right? You have a whole pint, you get more dopamine, right? The body releases dopamine. It's like you sway that way with the dopamine and then you've got to sway back, yeah. right? And the normal, your normal go-to feeling will not be your baseline, will not be happiness, mm. right? How I feel now in life, I'm like, feels weird. I'm yeah. like wandering around going, fucking hell, this is weird. Yeah. I'm, I'm just happy in general. Yeah. But I was never like that because when your body is f depleted of your fucking serotonin and your dopamine yeah. and you've got alcohol running through your brains and drugs, 
guilt, fear, yeah, all everything, the whole lot, yeah. But, but what, what that guilt, fear, and anxiety and depression is, right, is because you're not at baseline, you're lower than it, yeah. everything's depleted, you are, you're naturally in a state of, like, depression, naturally, because of all the chemicals and stuff like that. Your brain is going, what's the fucking problem? What's yeah. the threat? What's the threat? Where's the fucking tiger? Where's the fucking dinosaur? Whatever, yeah, what yeah, it yeah. used to be, yeah? Where's the threat? Where's the yeah. threat? And you're like, <sighs> worried, but yeah. you don't, that's anxiety, you don't yeah. know why. You take away the drink and the drugs, mate. You're just like, you're like, you wake up in the morning. And, you're, and if you had it exercise like I do, yeah. I wake up in the morning, get my exercise. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Amazing this, feeling, oh, isn't it? Whoa. Yeah. I'm like, and then my baseline is just happiness. Yeah. But the key to it is training. Yeah. The, tra the training. The training's the key. The 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 and the food. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you cut out the drink and drugs. Yeah. I mean, it's shit at first. Yeah. But if you can get through a few months, it becomes good. You get through like six months, it becomes better. Seven, eight months, you start going, fuck me, it's amazing. amazing yeah. You get to a year and you're like, mate, I'd want to tell everyone about it. That's why I'm one of them sober fucking influencers now. Because I, I want to tell everyone about it. It's the best. Yeah. And the best thing about it is you swap guilt and shame for pride, right? Yeah. People see you, like you said, people go, fuck me, you look fresh, fucking hell. Yeah. You're right. Lovely feeling, right? Yeah. When someone tells you that. Oh, your wife, and this, I cried my eyes out the first time my wife said it to me, I'm proud of you. Yeah, amazing. I cried my eyes out. And she doesn't even, and she's like, I'm taking you out for dinner on Saturday for, the only bad thing about hitting a year sober is how do you celebrate? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that is a good point. I'm like, right, what, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we do you want to get a bag in, babe? <laughs> no. you know Bed by mean? nine. Yeah. yeah. Fair play, mate. And moving forwards then. Moving forwards from after 2022, you've been clean this year. Tell me about your life and how it's improved so much and the world you're in right now and the tours you're doing and what you've got coming up. I feel like I've just got value now. Mm. Uh, you know, I feel like I've got, like I'm here talking to you, I've got something to say, yeah. do you know what I mean? Instead of just trying to be funny yeah. and uh, and trying to manipulate my audience into, you know, loving me and, mm. and whatever, do you know what I mean? Or social media in general. I feel like I've got a genuine something positive so I love that I think anyone out there that's going through something hard or has been through something hard the best thing you can take of it is once you survive it or you get out of it or you find a way to cope with it because yeah. I've got to remember that I could pick up a drink and it could all go fucking west mm. you know it's constant work but I have something to offer so so yeah just keep spreading that message and I just feel like it's just good man I've just like serenity just peace you know no no drama. Um, That's uh, the big one, right? It's peace, yeah. Peace. It's like life is different for yeah. me now, you know, yeah. and what's important to me is different. Like I always used to be, especially when I lost my TV show and everything, mm. I just had so much to prove. Like I'm still here, yeah. you know, you can't get rid of me or I'm still I'm still that guy, you yeah. know, I'm still famous or, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not, and you know, what people say online is, is it's hurtful. You're trying mm. to stay relevant and that, because it's true, you know. So when you're touring now then, have you toned it down? You're still the cheeky chappy, but have you yeah. toned it's just certain more subjects down? More intelligent, okay. More intelligent, okay. But in an answer to what you're saying, yeah. it's like ego is the biggest thing that you learn about through sobriety, yeah. Because you've got to sit with yourself, right? I can't escape how I feel with drinking drugs. So, the biggest thing for me now is ego. I don't think what else can I get, yeah. I think how can I hold on to what I got? Agree. Oh, how can I that's hold the key on to your business, this? mate? That's the key to business. So, how, are, many, how many entrepreneurs out there? Mm build it, build it, build it, lose everything yeah. and go again because they want that buzz. Yeah. But the good entrepreneurs will hold on yeah. to what I've they've got and protect it every yeah, angle. I've lost, my, I've, I've fucked up many things from going, I want something else as well. Yeah, shiny yeah. object syndrome. Yeah, mate. <laughs> but <laughs> How have your mates been? That's a different How are your mates yeah. been? We're all on WhatsApp groups with 15, 20, 30 yeah. lads, bouncing, piss take, da, 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 da. How have they been towards you knowing you're now clean? Because some people will take it in a way of going, Ah, the boring bastard. What's he doing that for? And some people will be jealous that you are clean and happy mm. and got sobriety in your life and, and everything's calm and peaceful where maybe their life isn't. How's yeah. it been for you? Well, the truth is that we all have, we have friends, uh, we have uh, sesh friends, right? Yeah. Um, and my, my oldest friends from when I was like at school, all close friends, um, we all drank and used drugs together. And it's kind of like, unfortunately, one of the only things that we've kind of got in common. So getting on it, mm. getting on it. So mm. my my friendship, my my day to day conversations in mm. regards to who I talk to and who my day to day friends are has changed yeah. completely. Yeah. You know, that I'm not saying they're not my friends. They're I, in fact they're all getting together for someone's 40th birthday on Friday this week. Mm. Uh, but I won't be going. Mm. And um, well, you won't be going because you know what will happen at that party. Everyone will be getting on mm. it. 
drinking booze and sniffing four o'clock yeah. in the morning in the kitchen chatting shit and then feeling shit for the next three four days yeah yeah okay and I just I won't it's not because I, I don't trust myself around it it's not even that it's it's just that I hey, yeah. fucking like don't interest me <laughs> yeah I like do you know I'm in a different place in my life now yeah. if you know I don't I want to be with my family mate yeah. you know uh, I don't want to be sat in a pub talk chatting shit to yeah. people that are drunk it's just the way I am people can call me arrogant I don't it's mind not, mate it's not yeah. arogant at all it's, it's, I think it's mature mate yeah. it's, well you're coming into your 40s now yeah exactly you found. You finally found that you have to live in the present and when you're living in the present present brings you happiness because so there's powerful. no fear it's so powerful right powerful mate it's being so in the powerful. present and being clean yeah. and fresh and training Yeah. and then you'll start working out right who are my pals? Who are my tight mates? You'll have five one hand. Yeah, yeah. Where before we've all got hundreds of mates because we're in the oh, party mate, scene. And I'm so much... I was in the nightclub game for ten years. Now festival. Oh, everyone game, loves 25. you. Everyone, everyone loves you. Everyone loves you. Everyone loves you. Yeah. yeah. I had twelve nightclubs every week for ten years yeah. all around the country. Everyone wanted a piece of you yeah. and stuff. But so I get it. Yeah. You it's know? like that. And look, it, look. That's any advice I'd give to anyone that's scared of sobriety because I was. I was like. I didn't want to be sober because I'm like, I love drinking. I love doing drugs. I love my friends, my friends, my friends, my friends. Yeah. I want to see my friends. That's the only thing I've yeah. got. Da -da. But it weren't. It was the drinking drugs yeah. that I wanted. Um, the only, any advice I'd give to you is if you want to go sober, you have to change your whole lifestyle. Embrace it. Start a new you. It's yeah. fucking brilliant. They're still my pals, but I don't talk to them every day. And the people I do talk to, like I recently, like a couple of weekends ago, I went away on a golfing trip. And the lads I went away with drink, yeah. but they don't. Get off their nut. Yeah. They don't because it's respectful. They, have a they come. They're like, yeah, we're gonna okay. we're gonna stay up and have, have a couple. couple. We're yeah. gonna stay up and have a couple. What are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to bed. They're like, wait, wicked. They're not going. Oh fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or they're not fucking missing golf because they're off their nut. Yeah. I don't want to be around it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's crazy. Powerful, mate. Mm -hmm. Do you feel powerful? Oh, mate. Yeah. I, I do. can see it. I can see the energy. Yeah, I do. And because I box as well now, yeah. I'm like, and my body's changed. I used to be a. If you'd seen a picture of me a fucking year ago, like at my wedding in. I was like fucking after my honeymoon, mate. Oh my god, I had a big belly like out of my face. I've lost like two and a half stone. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm like fucking. We do hardcore training. I'm sparring twice a week. I'm like I feel like a yeah. fucking beast. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Mate. But also just, I didn't used to like sitting at home, man. Mm. I didn't. I didn't used to like sitting in your like, own. In, you weren't happy in yourself. No, no. Of course, you probably the, hated yourself. That's what. That's yeah. what alcoholism's about. And and escape. Dr drinking drugs are escapism from yourself. And I fucking hated sit unless I was getting attention on stage, or yeah. I was getting love on social media, or I was getting off me nut, yeah. or I was getting getting getting. Yeah. If I was just sat like that, and my missus was there, and my kids was playing, I'm like, fucking, what am I getting out of this? Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. And what it was, I was longing for the drink, or the excitement, or the buzz, or the... Uh, now, when I sit at home, I'm like, this yeah, is mate. great. This is great, isn't it? This is great. Yeah, mate. Have you got nature around you? Um, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm in Surrey, so there's yeah, Surrey there's, old boy. Yeah. There's, some, there's a few trees. I'm on yeah. a golf course as yeah. well. <laughs> Business is good, no, but no, uh, no, I'll go and play golf a bit and stuff like that, yeah. But I'm, I am in, I'm into my training and I try the cold dips and I've done a little mount, I've done everything, you know. They said you get off the gear and you start climbing mountains, yeah. didn't you? So I've yeah, done a yeah. little. Are you touring? You've got a tour coming up, yeah, yeah. Tell, me about, tell me about the tour. So, yeah, I didn't even manage to get into it, but. Through my sobriety with yeah. the podcast, the producer that just randomly walked in, that it was like a studio that you rent, he randomly walked in, it, nothing to do with sobriety, but he was producing, you know, I started doing my podcast on sobriety. He worked, he was a producer for GB News as well. And he was like, mate, it's great to see you are, and I'm a big fan of your work. Why don't we get you on GB News? So I'd done a few stints on there on their comedy program. They got a comedy headliners, yeah. it's like a comedy news yeah. program. And I was on there cracking jokes and taking the piss out of the mm. news. Uh, but feeling good about myself, mm. do you know what I mean? Not like on TV, if you can call it TV, but yeah. I mean, not like on TV, like, I don't want to say anything yeah. wrong. I was like, I'm sober, I'm proud, yeah. I'm like, I'm here. You know what you're saying. I know what I'm saying, yeah, I'm yeah, present, yeah. I'm yeah, present, present, right? Yeah. And this, um, this fucking, uh, what do you call it? This company, there's a guy called Nigel Clarfeld, right? Mm. I contacted him about five years ago. I was like, oh, he's, a, he's he owns a massive um, comedy um what's it called uh promotion company yeah. right it's called bound bound and gag comedy and yeah. uh, massive right and i was like trying to find who the biggest in the game was everyone was saying this is nigel geezer i was contacting him i was like do you know who i am he's like yeah i was like oh, i want to do an edinburgh show you know i want to like because edinburgh is like the fucking yeah, it's the like hub, the hub yeah, 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 all yeah. the comedians i'm like I, I, I was like five years ago i was still on the piss and everything yeah. i was still angry yeah i was like i want to be fucking i want to show all the comedians i want to show them that i'm still here i want to show them i'm the best mm. And he was like, no, mate, no. He was like, you're toxic. Like, no one no one likes you. No one wants to see that name. The same fella? 
Yeah, Nigel. He said, yeah. no one wants... He's like, I'm not putting my name next to yeah. your name. He was just brutal with yeah. me. He was like, the comedians don't like you. The venues don't like you. My, my brand Tough and your love brand. Tough at his best. He saw, me on, yeah. um, he saw me on GB News. He'd done a bit of research, watched the podcast and got in touch with me. And he's like, mate, what a story. Like, what, a, what a journey, what a story. He was like, how do you feel about doing a tour? And I was like, he was like, listen, it's going to be hard. He, I've personally got to go to the, I've personally, I've got a relationship with every venue in the country. I've personally got to go around and see who will work with you. But if you're up for it, I'll back you. I'm, I, I believe it's your time. You deserve it. You know, I believe 10 years is long enough. You know, you're not a bad person. And he had this massive speech on the phone. He said, come meet me. I sat down with him and I just could see it in his eyes. He was like, you deserve it. And, you know, he's just yeah, like, okay. you know, and this is what it's, he was like, this is what comedy is about for me, you know, and I believe you're a talent as well. Yeah. You know, that's the main what's thing. His, what's his full name, Turner? Nigel Clarfeld. Clarfeld. Yeah. And it, it, and he was like, and the main, the bones of it is you're funny. Like, yeah. I believe you should be seen by your audience. You know? And he's given you a second chance. Yeah. So I said, go a Massive shout out to Nigel, yeah. by the way. That's yeah. quality. Bound and gag comedy. And, uh, and, uh, and, Bound uh, and gag comedy, is yeah, it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Shut up. Shut up. Shut the up. Is there. Yeah. It's on the poster. <laughs> fucking hell. Some people out there were going, is this guy for fucking <laughs> real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking hell. So tell me the tour. Tell me some dates. Tell me some tour. Where oh, are you at? He, he he went out. He, he went out to venues and he, he like the first week he went out to it's 30 dates, so it's everywhere, yeah. right? It's, it's Example. Like, oh mate. Um well fucking I Give me know. just give me an example. London, like, Birmingham, yeah, so we're doing London, Birmingham. Um, we're doing the Wirral, we've got like Bury St Edmunds. Okay, it's just uh, yeah. 30 towns and cities around 30 the towns okay. and cities, yeah, like Plymouth. Yeah, like okay. Him. We've sold out about five or six dates. You coming to Bournemouth? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. I'll have to. Okay. Okay. We, we sold over 10,000 tickets already. Good and, for you. Yeah, but it, funny enough, he come, it, when he started going out to the venues, I was really anxious. You know? What, waiting to see they're going to come yeah. back and say yes and or no? he come back okay. and he was like, yeah, so-and-so's yes, so-and-so's yes, so-and-so's yes, so-and-so's yes. He's like, I've got a no. And he had a no from a couple of big ones, which I won't call out because yeah. I'm doing like 1,000 seaters. Yeah. And he had a... So it, a big one is what size? A thousand to two thousand. Okay, speak. that's a big theatre. Yeah, big theatre. Yeah, okay, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. They're not arenas. Yeah, yeah. Next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. A year after. But um, and he uh, but he st he was like a dog with a bone. Mm. So once he had some lined up, he was going back to the ones that were Same. saying no. They're, they're and all he's going, yeah. he's going, they're doing it. And yeah. also, you've got fucking so and so coming that done this. Yeah. You know, other comedians. You know, like there's uh, one in America. I can't remember what his name is, but he was wanking himself off in front of girls mm. in bedrooms. He's a big American comedian, yeah. but um, and he's doing big tours. You mm. know, but. Mm, you know, and uh, and he was going back. Going, how come you can have him? He's done a joke. He's been charged, and da 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 da. And then mm. suddenly they're going, "Oh, fucking hell!" Oh. He's like, "I got them all." <laughs> and I'm like, Brilliant. Oh. But Brilliant. obviously, he's making money out yeah, of it. Yeah, of course. But, but I mean, that's what I needed. I yeah. needed someone to back. You need me. someone to believe you. Yeah, believe in you. And now, mm. because I'm selling them out, now the industry is like, "All oh, right, so he's back. He's back. He's okay. back." And now people are like. And also, cancel culture has kind of done a bit of a U-turn where people are like, because now you've got people getting cancelled for fucking real shit. Yeah. Real shit. You know, yeah, I won't yeah, name yeah. any names, yeah, yeah, but yeah. in the thing, now people going back going, well, he only said that. He said a cut, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, and it's a bit like, you know, 10 years ago, he wasn't a twat. Mm. So, mm. How do you, how would you be nervous on that tour to think, oh, what's going to come out of my mouth? Or you might, well, because I'm clean, I've got no booze inside me, I've got no gear inside me. I'm present. I'm older. I'm older. I'm more mature. I think I'm going to be funnier, but I know there's a level. Uh, yeah, no, I'm nervous. You know, okay. <laughs> I'm always nervous because um, there's some things that, that that are going on in the world now that, right or wrong, you just can't have an opinion on. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, there's like, you know. Well, everyone's scared to speak up, whether yeah. it's gender, whether it's yeah. woke trans, or, whether, or trans, or whatever. This, everyone's scared yeah. to speak but up. But to be honest with you, yeah. my attitude is: if it's the last tour, it's the last tour. It's going to be the best. It's going to be the best. Yeah. So I'm not sent. I'm not. I'm not writing to censor. Do you know what I mean? I'm not like, oh, I can't say that. I'm like, well, plus I went. I went. I went to go. And, I went to go and see Ricky Gervais's work in progress show mm. a few weeks ago. I'm seeing a lot. I'm looking at a lot of comedians, just getting a feel for the landscape, and he does not give a shit. Yeah. What Ricky Gervais? No. But there is. You you could say he's too big to cancel. Yeah. Whereas you know he, he's not going to do a joke wrong and then fucking the O2 is going to go. We ain't taking. Yeah. They're taking fucking yeah. a few million quid, yeah. right? Uh, and I am just on my way back up. It's a little bit easier for them to sort of say that. But um, I, what I've learned from watching comedians is it's all or nothing, man. So yeah, okay. I, I am no, I am conscious. I'm nervous, but I ain't going to censor myself. But you're not going to have anxiety. Now you're clean. No. You're not going to wake up in the morning and go have the fear of going, what did I say last night? No, you no. know what you're saying. You know what's going to come out. You know you're testing the water with X. Well, 
I, I'm getting rid of that now. I'm doing yeah. I'm doing work in progress shows on warm up shows, two three gigs a week now, um, which I never used to do before. Yeah. Um, so you're testing the water I'm now. Testing the water, okay. testing, and test- how's that feel for you? Brilliant. I love yeah. it. It's like I'm back. And do you feel that the crowd? You can tell a crowd straight away whether they're in or not. Yeah. Okay. And and weirdly enough, like I done a comedy club in Vauxhall a couple of nights ago, and there was thirty people in there. And it was a small little comedy club. They never would have had me before. Okay. Never. And so being in there and as a real comedian yeah. amongst other comedians doing five or ten minutes, yeah. I was like, that's how I felt I made it. Okay. Not when I'm doing fucking Shepherd's Bush Empire yeah. and there's 2,000 or I think yeah. it's about 2,000 of my fans in there. Yeah. That's like, all right, great. They're my followers. Being in there with 30 people with other comedians and other comedians going, fucking hell, when you Dapper Laughs? Yeah. I'm like, welcome back. Yeah. Where, did, like, where does Dapper Laughs come from? Um... Well, it's dapper because I'm good looking and laughs because I'm funny. <laughs> End of. End of. <laughs> uh, it was an alter ego that, that when I really wanted to push the lad culture, I just wanted to create. I'm, I'm a character guy. You seen, Have you seen Kid Frankie? Yeah. No. I don't know. Right. So if anyone that follows me yep. and make sure you go and follow me on my Instagram, mm. da, uh, Dapper's Instagram, Lightly Evans, I'm a character. Yep. I'm a character performer. Right. So I, I create many characters and, and Dapper Last was just the most famous one. I've also got like Kid Frankie. He's a little kid. The sell sweets like he's a drug dealer. I've got like the oh, sesh- I have seen yeah, that. Yeah. Is that Kid Frank? Is it? That's okay, me, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Sesh Gremlin, uh, he wears like a cone on his head. He's like, "Hello, you little sausage." Yeah. The Sesh Gremlin's my addiction, and every, like I don't do them at the moment because I'm not sure how I feel about them. Yeah. But I used to do them every Friday where I'd, I'd do them with my missus, where she'd be like baking a cake or something with some flour, yeah. and I, and I'd be like. Oh, all right, babe. And she's like, yeah, it's Friday. And as soon as she says it's Friday, I'm yeah. like, <gasps> and then he comes up oh, right. and he's like, hello, you little sausage. Are you ready to get on the yeah, bugle? Yeah, 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 and I'm yeah. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it's like, that is some flour. That's cocaine. And in one of the videos, he's like, sprinkle it on your missus' tits and try and sniff it off. She'll love it. She will. And then the camera cuts back to me and I'm going, no, no, no. no, no and yeah, she's yeah. just like looking at me and I end up sprinkling it on yeah, my yeah, bangers yeah. and trying to do a line and get <laughs> slapped. And uh, so, so Dapper Last was just, he was that, he was that vent for that, yeah. cap, that, that, that type of humour. Dan, I've absolutely That's loved this episode, mate. Yeah. That's been good, hasn't it? Yeah, mate. And do you know what? I just want to say, I'm really happy because I've done, I've done another, I've been doing a, a lot of podcasts uh, recently and they've all been about sort of depressing stuff and addiction. And this has been a right laugh, man. <laughs> it, remi- it reminds me that um, I'm a funny you are. Oh, can I say that? <laughs> I think then the old T bombs have been getting b- oh, beeped yeah, beep out. It, but... <laughs> beep it. But for those of you at home, you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, it's a pleasure, mate. Thank I you. I think what you've gone through, mate, to where you are now, you've gone through hell and back. Yeah. Like knowing that you're going to be this massive thing with no role model or no sort of figure around you to guide you and lead you. You've just gone and done it. You've created an entrepreneur spirit to go, oh, I've done it, I've got all these followers, I'm going to earn money from it. Bang, bang, bang. You said the wrong things. You probably regret it because you were a young kid back yeah. there, naive, and on the gear, and on the booze. But seeing you today, mate, and hearing your whole story, it's really powerful, mate. Thank and you. I really pray for you that you stay clean and sober the rest of your life. Yeah, I will, man. Yeah. I will. It's too good. Yeah. It's too good. And a massive shout out, just before we finish, have you got anything to say to Shelley and your kids? Oh, don't. You'll make me cry, man. I, I just, you know... Shelly knows the beautiful thing about sobriety is like I keep saying you can't avoid your shame and I've got a lot of shame about you know ruining parts of my wedding day and ruining the birth births of my kids um but through through learn through feeling that shame I'll communicate it to her you know so she finally gets like when she finally sees that I see, yeah. you know, which gives her closure. Not closure, she'll never have closure, but do you know what I mean? It gives her, she's like, oh, thank you for fucking seeing yeah. that because yeah. she holds on to that resentment. Yeah. So um, all I want to say to Shelly is thank you. I don't, you know, um, I don't know how you've managed to stay with me this long and and f- through, staying, through staying with me, yeah, just thank you. I, 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 I honestly believe I, it, I would be probably dead. I know that people say that, mm. but I think that if I didn't have the, my kids and my missus, there's no way I'd go sober because I'd have no reason to. Yeah. Um, so I just want to say a big thank you to Shelley. And um, we got an exciting, I can't say too much about it, but we've got an exciting future coming up, me yeah. and her. 
Wicked. If you can read between the lines yeah. on that, we've got great things coming. So that's amazing. So I love you, and uh, yeah, I mean, she gets a good part of the deal as well. I'm looking mm. good, you know. What I mean? <laughs> so you know what I mean? And you know, there's a small period when you go sober as well. The shagging get, gets weird. Because, gets, you know what I mean? Because you've been drinking and <laughs> you don't know, you don't know if you're still. But now I'm back to be back. So, so it's for both. The sobriety is for both of us, baby. No, but I love her. Thank that's you. amazing, mate. Thank Protect- you for giving me the opportunity to say that to her. Yeah, well. mate. Pleasure. It's, it protects Shelley and the kids of your life, mate. Yeah. Yeah, you're a proper gentleman. Thank you, mate. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. It's been fun. Yeah, mate. Prob- mate, that first bit, mate, that whole section. I mate, didn't I think we were going to get through it. I, mate, thought, I-, I thought, can I tell me a story then, or what? <laughs> yeah. Mate, you're uh, you, good. you come to the tour, yeah? Yeah, mate, 100%. Good, mate. I'll be at the tour. Good, man. Front seats, VIP at the yeah. back. Yeah, we'll get you on stage. Yeah, mate. Yeah. <laughs> you're a good man. Thank Cheers, you Dan. Thank Cheers, you. mate. Bye.